Rorschach's journal, October 12, 1985. Dog carcass in alley this morning, tire tread on burst stomach. This city is afraid of me. I have seen its true face. The streets are extended gutters, and the gutters are full of blood. And when the drains finally scab over, all the vermin will drown. The accumulated filth of all their sex and murder will foam up about their waists, and all the whores and politicians will look up and shout, save us. And I'll look down and whisper, no. Hmm, that's quite a drop. Yeah, poor guy. You know, I always wonder. You think you black out before you hit the sidewalk or what? Frankly, I don't need to know that bad. What do you think happened here? Well, looks like someone broke in by busting this door down. That would take two guys or one guy on serious drugs because the door had a chain fastened on the inside, which means that the occupant was home when it happened. Mm. Yeah, I saw the body, and he looked beefy enough to protect himself. I mean, this guy, this Blake guy, he had muscles like a weightlifter. He would have put up some kind of fight, I'm certain. Yeah, well, looks like he lost. The data we have suggests he's been doing some sort of overseas diplomatic work for years. A lot of classy expense account living. Maybe he just got soft. Hey, the guy he's shaking hands with in the picture? It's Vice President Ford. I think we can rule him out as a suspect. A job like this just isn't his style. A little money got stolen, but no way is this a straight burglary. Somebody really had it in for this guy. I mean, how did he go out of the window? Maybe he tripped against it. Forget it. That's strong glass, man. I think you'd have to be thrown. Which floor you want? Oh, uh, ground floor, please. Ground floor. Coming up. Let's not raise too much dust over this one. We don't need any masked Avengers getting interested in cutting in. You take this vigilante stuff too seriously. Since the Keen Act was passed in 77, only the government-sponsored weirdos are active. They don't interfere. Screw them. What about Rorschach? He's crazier in a snake's armpit and wanted on two counts murder one. If he gets involved, we'll be up to our butts and corpses. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Just a shiver. Must be getting a cold.
So, there I was in the supermarket, buying dog food for old Phantom here. I turned the corner of the aisle, and wham! I bump into the Screaming Skull. You remember him? I think I heard you mention him. Oh, I put him away a dozen times in the 40s. But he reformed and turned to Jesus since then. Married, got two kids. We traded addresses. Nice guy. Ah, uh, Hollis, listen. It's almost midnight. I, I ought to go. Oh, sure. Lost track of the time there, talking about all that old stuff. You must have been bored as hell. You know better than that. These Saturday night beer sessions are what keeps me going. Yeah, well, us old retired guys gotta stick together. You know, it was a crying shame they put you youngsters out to grass in 77. You were a better night owl than I ever was. Hollis, we both know that's bullshit, but thanks anyway. Hey, watch with the language. This is the left hook that floored Captain Axis, remember? Hey, thanks for another great night, Hollis. Take care of yourself. You too, Danny. God bless. to some beans. Hope you don't mind. Rorschach? Ah, uh, th that is, no. No, of course, I don't mind. So, uh, long time no see. H how have you been keeping? Out of prison, so far. Take a look at this. Ah, uh, what is it? This little stain, is that bean juice or... That's right. Human bean juice. <laughs> Badge belonged to the comedian. Blood, too. He's dead. Dead? What? You're talking about the comedian? Investigated a routine homicide. Victim named Edward Blake. Found the costume in Blake's wardrobe. Seems he was the comedian. Somebody threw him out of a window. Somebody? Uh, listen, but maybe we could talk about this down in my workshop. I feel kind of exposed up here, but right down this way. Uh, you haven't been down here for a while. Neither of you. A lot of dust. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes I come and sit down here for a while, but there doesn't seem much point since I retired. Listen, uh, about the comedian... Might it have just been an ordinary burglary or something? Maybe the killer didn't know who Blake was. An ordinary burglar? Kill the comedian? Ridiculous. Hmm. I guess it doesn't seem very likely. I heard he'd been working for the government since 77, knocking over Marxist republics in South America. Maybe this was a political killing. Maybe. Or maybe someone's picking off costumed heroes. How's your friend Hollis Mason these days? Hollis? What does he... They were both Minutemen when Blake was 16 and Mason was the first night owl. That book Mason wrote, he said some bad things about the comedian in it. Rorschach, I don't like what you're implying here. Implying nothing. Just an observation. Anyway, I thought I'd let you know, in case somebody's gunning for masks. Better go now. Things to do. Yeah, well, the tunnel brings you out in a warehouse two blocks north. Yes, I remember. Used to come here often, back when we were partners. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, those were great times, Rorschach. Great times. Whatever happened to them? You quit. Rorschach's Journal, October 13th, 1985. Soon, it will be dark. Beneath me, this awful city, it screams like an abattoir full of retarded children. New York. On Friday night, a comedian died in New York. Somebody knows why. Down there, somebody knows. The dusk reeks of fornication and bad consciences. I believe I shall take my exercise. Shack, uh, how you doing, fella? I'm fine, Happy Harry. Yourself? Fine. I'm f I'm fine. I'm and I'm and I'm glad you're fine too. And uh, and uh, oh God, please don't kill anybody. Guy went sidewalk diving Friday night. I don't think he was alone when it happened. Name was Edward Blake friend of mine. Hey, you hear that? He's got friends. Must have changed his deodorant. Steve, for God's sake, man, shut up. I, uh, I gotta take a leak. Hey, hey, I didn't mean anything. I, uh, I haven't been in the apple too long, and I, I, uh... <laughs> I've just broken this gentleman's little finger. Who killed Edward Blake? <laughs> and his index finger. Who killed Edward Blake? Please, please, we don't know. Oh, God, man, leave him alone. First visit of evening, fruitless. Nobody knew anything. Feel slightly depressed. This city is dying of rabies. Is the best I can do to wipe random flecks of foam from its lips. Uh. Never despair, never surrender. I leave the human cockroaches to discuss their heroin and child pornography. I have business elsewhere with a better class of person. The comedian dead? But why? You were always supposed to be world's smartest man, Vite. You tell me. I never claim to be anybody special, Rorschach. I just have some overenthusiastic PR men. Listen, could it have been a political killing? Maybe the Soviets. Dryberg said same thing. Don't believe it. America has Dr. Manhattan. Reds have been running scared since 65. They'd never dare antagonize us. I think we've got a mask killer. Not necessarily. The comedian had plenty of other political enemies to choose from. The man was practically a Nazi. He stood up for his country, Veidt. He never let anybody retire him. Never cashed in on his reputation. Never set up a company selling posters and diet books and toy soldiers based on himself. Never became a prostitute. If that makes him a Nazi, you might as well call me a Nazi too. Hmm. Rorschach, I know we were never friends, but even so, you're being unfair. Nobody retired me. I chose to quit adventuring and go public two years before the police strike made the Keen Act necessary. Yes, good timing. 
I came here to warn you about the mask, killer, so you didn't end up the smartest man in the morgue. But I guess there's worse things to end up as. Be seeing you. Sure. Have a nice day. Meeting with Vite left bad taste in mouth. He is pampered and decadent, betraying even his own shallow liberal affectations. Possibly homosexual, must remember to investigate further. Dryberg as bad, a flabby failure who sits whimpering in his basement. Why are so few of us left active, healthy, and without personality disorders? The first night owl runs an auto repair shop. The first Silk Spectre is a bloated, aging whore dying in a Californian rest resort. Captain Metropolis was decapitated in a car crash back in 74. Mothman's in an asylum up in Maine. The silhouette retired in disgrace, murdered six weeks later by a minor adversary seeking revenge. Dollar Bill got shot. Hooded Justice went missing in 55. The comedian is dead. Only two names remaining on my list. Both share private quarters at Rockefeller Military Research Center. I shall go to them. I shall go and tell the indestructible man that someone plans to murder him. Good evening, Rorschach. Good evening, Dr. Manhattan. What are you doing here, Rorschach? This is a government base, and I hear you're wanted by the police. Ah, good evening, Miss Jupiter. That's you, Spetschik. Jupiter was just a name my mother assumed because she didn't want anyone to know she was Polish. Apologies. Came to warn you both and bring bad news. The comedian is dead. Yes. Since he and I are the only two extra-normal operatives currently employed by the government, I was informed on Saturday morning. Take it you're not too concerned about Blake's death. Life and death are unquantifiable abstracts. Why should I be concerned? Anyway, it couldn't have happened to a nicer person. Blake was a bastard. He was a monster. You know, he tried to rape my mother back when they were both Minutemen. Um, so you support the allegations made in Hollis Mason's book concerning Blake? What Mason said in Under the Hood is what happened. Why do you think Blake never sued Mason? I'm not here to speculate on the moral lapses of men who died in their country's service. I came to warn... Rape is a moral lapse! John, get this creep out of here! You seem to be upsetting, Laurie. I think you ought to go. With respect, Dr. Manhattan, I believe someone is eliminating masked adventurers, possibly some old foe with a grudge. I believe... I said, I think you ought to go. Spent a lot of time getting in to see you, not leaving before I... <laughs> ...had my say. He's gone. Are you still upset? Yeah. I just don't like Rorschach. He's sick. Sick inside his mind. The sooner the police put him away, the better. John. Yes, Lori. I feel cooped up sometimes. Maybe I could use a night out. You know... Rorschach mentioned Dan Dryberg. We haven't seen Dan in years. Maybe I'll call him up, ask him out to dinner, if you don't mind, that is. Of course not. I'd join you, but I think I'm close to locating a Gluino, which would completely validate supersymmetrical. That's fascinating. I'll call Dan. Hello, Dan. Lori. Lori, you spetchic.
Rorschach's journal, October 13th, 1985, 11.30 p.m. On Friday night, a comedian died in New York. Someone threw him out of a window, and when he hit the sidewalk, his head was driven up into his stomach. Nobody cares. Nobody cares but me. Are they right? Is it futile? Soon there will be war. Millions will burn. Millions will perish in sickness and misery. Why does one death matter against so many? Because there is good and there is evil, and evil must be punished. Even in the face of Armageddon, I shall not compromise in this. But there are so many deserving of retribution, and there is so little time. Me and John? Oh, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Couldn't be better. It's just, I keep thinking, I'm 35. What have I done? I've spent eight years in semi-retirement, preceded by ten years running round in a stupid costume because my stupid mother wanted me to. You remember that costume? With that stupid little short skirt and the neckline going down to my navel? God, that was so dreadful. God, yes, dreadful. You know, when I think back, why did we do it? Why did we dress up like that? The Keen Act was the best thing that ever happened to us. Yeah, you're probably right. Hey, you remember that guy? The one who pretended to be a super villain so he could get beaten up? Oh, you mean Captain Carnage. <laughs> he was one for the books. I caught him coming out of this jeweler's. I didn't know what his racket was. I start hitting him, and I think, geez, he's breathing funny. Does he have asthma? <laughs> he tried that with me. Only I'd heard about him, so I just walked away. He follows me down the street, broad daylight, right? He's saying, punish me. I'm saying, no, get lost. Uh, whatever happened to him? Ah, uh, well, he pulled it on Rorschach, and Rorschach dropped him down an elevator shaft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. That isn't funny. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, that felt good. There don't seem to be so many laughs around these days. Well, what do you expect? The comedian is dead. Look at her, pretty as a picture and still keeping her figure. 
So, honey, what brings you to the city of the dead? Mom, being lazy isn't a terminal condition, so spare me the city of the dead crap. Where's John? John's at some funeral I didn't feel like attending, so he transported me here. Always gets me the same. One second, New York, the next, wham, California. So long breakfast, poor baby. So this funeral, anyone I know? The funeral? Oh, no, that's just, you know, some little official thing John had to go. Protocol. It's Eddie Blake's funeral, right? Mom, Lori, don't treat me like a kid. I can still read. I saw in the paper he got murdered. Guess he finally reached the punchline, huh? Poor Eddie. Poor Eddie? Mom, how can you say that after he almost... Lori, you're young. You don't know. Things change. What happened, happened 40 years ago. It's history. Yeah, well, so's Dachau. I never forgive somebody who did that. Listen, getting old, you get a different perspective. The big stuff looks smaller somehow. In the end, you just wash your hands of it and shut it away. Oh, right, just like that. So what, you want I should curl up and whimper for 40 years? Life goes on, honey, life goes on. Plus, it's a beautiful day. You know, <coughs> you know, you and John ought to move out here for the weather. Was it this sunny in New York today? Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Mm, well, that's good. <coughs> Lots of sunshine is like vitamins. It's healthy, and being healthy is what counts. I mean, without your health, where are you? At my age, <coughs> you want to take care of yourself. Mom, it's okay. I'm putting it out, okay? It's dead. Extinguished. You know, that makes just three of us Minutemen left now. Me, Hollis Mason, and poor Byron Lewis in the bug house in Maine. Funny, Eddie was the youngest, always joking about how old we all were. He said he'd bury us. You see, that was Eddie, always talking like he was on top of it, like it was never going to happen to him. He was the comedian. He always thought he'd get the last laugh. Yeah, well, John told me about some of the stuff Blake did in Nam. Sounds like he had a strange sense of humor. Oh, speaking of which, you remember that guy who writes me letters? Well, he sent me an item of memorabilia. It's a Tijuana Bible, a little eight-page porno comic they did in the 30s and 40s. This one's about me. Oh, God, Mother, this is just gross. Somebody sent you this? Sure. Listen, these things are valuable, like antiques, 80 bucks and up. I think it's kind of flattering. Flattering? Being reminded that people used to slobber over me? Sure. Lori, I'm 65. Every day the future looks a little bit darker, but the past, even the grimy parts of it, well, it just keeps on getting brighter all the time. Okay, that's it. Nice picture, folks. Yeah, we can move. I can finally scratch my armpit. Ooh, I got spots in my eyes. Really? Let me take a look and see if I can fish them out for you. Oh, Eddie, give me a break. Okay, Mr. Al, that's eight prints. They'll be ready in a week. Boy, real photo sessions. Do you think my hair will come out looking okay, H.J.? Frankly, Sally, I don't go in for all this razzle-dazzle. I'd rather be on the streets doing my job. Streets, nothing. Why don't Uncle Sammy get us into Europe where the action is? Well, firstly, we aren't at war. Secondly, we should avoid political situations. Perhaps the Poles thought so too, eh? You agree, Sally? Well, I'm sure I wouldn't know anything about what the Polish people think. Me? I hope we keep out of it. Just thinking about war, it scares me. Hey, what's with the wings? Come on, what's with all this discord I hear? Meeting's over. Listen. Everyone meet in the lobby in five minutes. We'll go back to the owl's nest for a beer. Fine, you guys go ahead. I gotta change.
Hi. Eddie? What the hell are you doing here? You knew I was changing. Sure I did. You announced it loud enough. Come on, baby. I know what you need. You gotta have some reason for wearing an outfit like this, huh? Eddie, no. Sure. No. Spelled Y-E. Spelled N. Oh. Ah. Eddie. Sally, what's keeping you? The others are all waiting to... You vicious little son of a bitch. Hey, wait! She wanted me to do it. She... I'm going to break your neck. This is what you like, huh? This is what gets you hot. Get out. I'm going. But I got your number, see? And one of these days, the joke's gonna be on you. Get out. Get up. And for God's sake, cover yourself. Mother, this is vile. Mother? Hmm? I said, doesn't this sleazeball image bother you? Honestly, Mother, you... Why do you only call me Mother when you're mad? Anyway, what about your image? At least I don't sleep with an H-bomb. John is not an H-bomb. Honey, the only difference is that they didn't have to get the H-bomb laid every once in a while. Uh-huh, right. I see. Of course you realize you're being totally unfair. Yeah, well, things are tough all over, Cupcake. And it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Except in California. Man that is born of woman hath but a short time to live and is full of miseries. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins art justly displeased. Well, firstly, let me say I'm pleased to see so many of you here. Secondly, for those who only know me as Captain Metropolis, the name's Nelson Gardner. Call me Nelson. Third, uh, I guess I should welcome everybody to the first ever meeting of the Crime Busters. But why the Crime Busters? Well, as you know, this country hasn't had an organization of masked adventurers since the Minutemen disbanded in 49. New social evils emerge every day. Promiscuity, drugs, campus subversion, you name it. Now, by banding together as the Crime Busters, we... Bullshit! This whole idea, this Crime Busters shtick, it stinks! What it is, Nelly, is that you're getting old and you want to go on playing cowboys and Indians. Th that isn't true. Uh, listen, let's not throw the idea out right away. Me and Rorschach have made headway into the gang problem by pooling our efforts. A group this size seems more like a publicity exercise somehow. It's too big and unwieldy. Surely that's just an organizational problem. With the right person coordinating the group, I think, oh, and I wonder who that would be. Got any ideas, Ozzy? I mean, you are the smartest guy in the world, right? 
It doesn't require genius to see that America has problems that need tackling damn straight. And it takes a moron to think they're small enough for clowns like you guys to handle. I think I'm as well informed as anyone. Given correct handling, none of the world's problems are insurmountable. All it takes is a little intelligence, which you got in spades, right? You people are a joke. You hear Moloch's back in town, you think, oh boy, let's gang up and bust them. You think that matters? You think that solves anything? Well, of course it matters if it don't matter squat. Here, let me show you why it don't matter. Hey, what are you doing? It doesn't matter squat because inside 30 years, the nukes are gonna be flying like May bugs. My display. And then Ozzy here is gonna be the smartest man on the cinder. See you in the funny papers. John, I think I'd like to go home now, please. Listen, uh, Nelson, this isn't working out. Maybe, please, don't all leave. Somebody has to do it, don't you see? Somebody has to save the world. Oh Lord, most mighty, O oh holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O oh God, most mighty, O oh holy and merciful Savior. Thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. Goddamn fireworks! You thought this country had had enough goddamn fireworks. I suppose VVN night must mean something to them. Nah, average Vietnamese don't give a damn who won. It means something to the dinks and it means plenty to us. I mean, if we'd lost this war, I don't know. I think it might have driven us a little crazy, you know, as a country. But thanks to you, we didn't, right? You sound bitter. You're a strange man, Blake. You have strange attitudes to life and war. Strange? Listen, once you figure out what a joke everything is, being the comedian's the only thing makes sense. The charred villages, the boys with necklaces of human ears, these are part of the joke. Hey, I never said it was a good joke. I'm just playing along with the gag. Ha! Look at that. There he is. First press helicopter into Saigon since the ceasefire. He's got the next election in the bag for sure. Me, I'm taking the first chopper out. You're anxious to leave? Duh. Are you kidding? I hate this place. I hate the temperature. I hate the smell. I hate this rotten, cheap bourbon. Mr. Eddie? Oh, great. Oh, thank you, God. That's just what I needed. Now war is over, Mr. Eddie. Now I must talk with you. Listen, we got nothing to talk about. I'm leaving. Saigon, number 10. New York, number one, okay? You walk away from this? Sure. But me? I cannot walk away from what grows in my belly. I cannot forget. Well, that's unfortunate, because that's just what I'm going to do. Forget you. Forget your cruddy little country. All of it. I do not think so. I think you remember me and my country. I think you remember us as long as you live. What did you do, you bitch? You hurt my face. You whore. You filthy, stinking, worthless. Blake. Lousy piece of. Blake, don't do it. Medic. I gotta find a goddamn medic. Oh, that bitch. Blake. She was pregnant. You gunned her down. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Pregnant woman gunned her down. Bang. And you know what? You watched me. 
You could have changed the gun into steam, or the bullets into mercury, or the bottle into snowflakes. You could have teleported either of us to goddamn Australia, but you didn't lift a finger. You don't really give a damn about human beings. I watched you. You never cared about what's her name, Janie Slater, even before you ditched her. Soon you won't be interested in Sally Jupiter's little gal either. You're drifting out of touch, Doc. You're turning into a flake. God help us all. Much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother here departed, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. There's no need for panic. The police strike is being negotiated right now. Listen, you little punks, you better get back in your rat holes. I got riot gas, I got rubber bullets. Okay, that does it. You're a pig and a rapist. We don't want vigilantes. We want regular cops. Two potato, three potato, four potato. Heads up. Look, I'm sorry. You haven't left us any choice. This stuff is dangerous. Please, clear the streets. The whole city is erupting. How long can we keep this up? Run, you suckers! My government contacts tell me some new act is being herded through. Until then, we're society's only protection. We keep it up as long as we have to. Protection? Who are we protecting them from? from themselves. What's the matter? Don't you feel comfortable unless you're up against some schmuck in a Halloween suit? Speaking of which, where the hell are Rorschach and the others? John and Lori are handling the riots in Washington. Rorschach's across town trying to hold the Lower East Side. He, uh, he works mostly on his own these days. Rorschach's nuts. He's been nuts ever since that kidnapping he handled three years back. Him, Byron Lewis, John goddamn walking H-bomb Osterman, all nuts. But not you? No, not me. I keep things in proportion. I try to see the funny side. Drop that can, you little freak! <laughs> ah, I've seen that written up all over. They don't like us, and they don't trust us. This whole situation, it's horrible. The country's disintegrating. What's happened to America? What's happened to the American dream? It came true. You're looking at it. Now, come on. Let's really put these jokers through some changes. Who shall change our vile body that it may be like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself? I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, from henceforth, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
Please! This must be a mistake. You have the wrong person. No. Edgar William Jacoby, also known as Edgar William Vaughn, also known as Moloch. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a businessman, a retired business. I... Lying. Do it again. Broken arm. Not joking. Oh, God, please. I spent the 70s in jail. I'm not Moloch anymore. I just want to be left alone. What do you want with me? Heard you attended funeral today. Why? The funeral? I just felt I should. I'd been thinking about the comedian since he visited me, and... Oh, oh God! What did I say? How do you know Edward Blake was the comedian? W when he broke in to see me. He, he was drunk, had his mask off. The guy was scared of something, crying. I sat in bed, scared stiff. He sounded crazy. I, I thought he was going to kill me. This was like a, a week before I heard he died. I guess it was his last performance. It's a joke. It's all a joke. I mean, I thought I knew how it was, how the world was. But then I found out about this gag, this joke. You're part of it, Molog, old pal, you know that? If I thought you did know, I saw your name on the list. You and Janie Slater. But if I thought you were in on this, I'd kill you. You understand? Kill you. I mean, you fought that big blue geek. You know what his head's like. I'll tell you, who knows which way he'll jump if anybody messes with him. What gets me, I need never have looked out of the airship, never seen the goddamn island, never got involved. It all stinks. I mean, this joke, I mean, I thought I was the comedian, you know? Oh, God. I can't believe it. I can't believe anybody would do that. I can't... I can't believe... <laughs> On that island, they got writers, scientists, artists, and what they're doing. <laughs> I mean... I done some bad things, but I never did anything like Oh, mother. Oh forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I mean, what's funny? What's so goddamn funny? I don't get it. Somebody explain. Somebody explain it to me. Then he left. I don't know what the hell it was about. <sighs> Funny story. Sounds unbelievable. Probably true. S so what? You mean that's it? I'm clean? Clean? You? Searched house. Found Laetril. Phony medication. Made from apricot pits. Outlawed three years ago. Please, don't confiscate it. I have cancer. Cancer? What kind cancer? <laughs> well, now, you know that kind of cancer that you eventually get better from? Well, that ain't the kind of cancer I got. Hmm. Very well. Copy down name of company. Report them later. You're off hook for now. Keep out of trouble. Rorschach's Journal, October 16th, 1985, 42nd Street. Women's breasts draped across every billboard, every display, littering the sidewalk was offered Swedish love and French love, but not American love. American love like Coke and green glass bottles. They don't make it anymore. Thought about Moloch's story on way to cemetery. Could all be lies, 
could all be part of revenge scheme planned during his decade behind bars. But if true, then what? Puzzling reference to an island, also to Dr. Manhattan. Might he be at risk in some way? So many questions. Never mind, answers soon. Nothing is insoluble. Nothing is hopeless. Not while there's life. Paid last respects, quietly, without fuss. Edward Morgan Blake, born 1924, 45 years a comedian, died 1985, buried in the rain. Is that what happens to us? A life of conflict with no time for friends, so that when it's done, only our enemies leave roses. Violent lives ending violently. We never die in bed. Not allowed. Something in our personalities, perhaps. Some animal urge, unimportant. We do what we have to do. Others bury their heads between the swollen teats of indulgence and gratification, piglets squirming beneath a sow for shelter. But there is no shelter. And the future is bearing down like an express train. Blake understood, treated it like a joke, but he understood. He saw the true face of the 20th century and chose to become a reflection, a parody of it. No one else saw the joke. That's why he was lonely. Heard joke once. Man goes to doctor, says he's depressed, says life seems harsh and cruel. Says he feels all alone in a threatening world where what lies ahead is vague and uncertain. Doctor says treatment is simple. Great clown Pagliacci is in town tonight. Go and see him. That should pick you up. Man bursts into tears. Says, but doctor, I am Pagliacci. Good joke. Everybody laugh, roll on snare drum, curtains. Delirious. I saw that hell-bound ship's black sails against the yellow indie sky and knew again the stench of powder and men's brains and war. The waves about me were scarlet, foaming, horribly warm. Yet still the freighter's hideous crew called out, more blood, more blood. Its tar-streaked hull rolled over me. In despair, I sank beneath those foul pink 
billows, offering up my wretched soul to Almighty God, His mercy, and His judgment. We ought to nuke Russia and let God sort it out. Of course, that's just my opinion. For what that's worth, you know, in a final analysis. Waking from nightmare, I found myself upon a dismal beachhead amongst dead men and the pieces of dead men. Listen, I see every goddamn front page in the world. Bose and Ridley lay nearby. Birds were eating his thoughts and memories. For instance, the more disasters happen, the more papers I sell. Reader, take comfort from this. In hell, at least the gulls are contented. See, everything's connected. A news vendor understands that. He don't retreat from reality. I stood in the surf and wept, unable to bear my circumstances. He's a survivor. Eventually, tears ceased. My misfortunes were small. I was alive. News vendors always cope. They're indestructible. They thrive on disaster. They... And I knew that life had no worse news to offer me. Is it here yet? Oh, your copy of the New Frontiersman. Sure, it's here. I keep it for you every day, don't I? How's the end of the world coming along? Today, for certain, the figurehead lay at my feet, blindfolded by seaweed. I made to take the ribbon of kelp from off her painted eyes, then thought better of it, not wishing her to suffer the terrible distractions of that grim tideline. She had borne me through seas of blood. Her damp embrace had prevented me from drifting beyond reach. Yet this small comfort was all I could offer. I could not love her as she had loved me. Um, John, when do you have to do that TV interview this evening? Is it soon? No, we have plenty of time. Good. Uh... Ah! Oh, God! That's horrible! Top it! John, be one person again. Lori, don't, don't be, be upset. upset. I thought, thought you'd, you'd enjoy it. it. I do try to please you. I know. I I'm sorry. I overreacted. Look, I gotta go find a cigarette. I'm sorry. I don't know what stimulates you anymore. John, please. It's okay. Just forget it. I'm fine, really. It doesn't matter. John, how the hell long have you been working out here? Lori, try to understand. Were you working in here at the same time as we were in bed? Lori, my work's at an important stage. It seemed unnecessary to... Shut up! I hate you. I'm leaving. I'm getting dressed, and I'm leaving. Lori, can't we talk? If you think there's a problem with my attitude, I'm prepared to discuss it. Lori. He couldn't relate to me, not emotionally, certainly not sexually. Within three years, he dumped me for some 16-year-old who ran around in her underwear. One day, he'll find out. He'll find out what it feels like. I see. So, Miss Slater, how do you feel now that you've learned about your condition? Bitter. Bitter as hell. I started smoking. I figured, why not? Nobody's gonna miss me after I'm gone. I know that. Especially not him. You see, he doesn't care. He doesn't have to get old. That's... <laughs> Excuse me. That's why I'm talking to you people. I want the world to know about him, what he did to me. I kept quiet all these years, but then this latest thing happened, and I had to let it all out. <coughs> Excuse me. After all he meant to me, after all the times he said he loved me. It's okay, Miss Slater. If you want, you can stop here. Miss Slater, I'd like to thank you for helping Nova express so much with these investigations. I'm sure after the paper finally goes out, tonight you'll feel so much better. No, 
I won't. Not after what he did to me. Some things, once they're busted, they can't ever be fixed. But I'm glad that after that show tonight, everybody's gonna know what he did. Oh, God. It's such a relief. It's such a relief just to talk to somebody. Lori? Well, come on in. It's good to see you. Sorry about all this mess. I'm having a new lock fitted. It's okay, friend. Almost through here. I'll make coffee. It's funny. I was hoping I'd run into you so I could thank you for that dinner last week. I thought maybe you'd be at the funeral, but John said you'd had to visit your mother. Y you take sugar with your coffee? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, two sugars. So, anyway, how is your mom? Hollis Mason was asking after her just the other week. Oh, she's great. Just great. <laughs> God, oh God, I'm so sorry. Hey, look, it's okay. I mean, whatever's bothering you, it's not the end of the world, right? I left John. Oh, I see. That is, I, um, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm dumping it on you. I just, I just don't know anybody else. I don't know anybody except goddamn superheroes. Dan. Living with him, you don't know what it's like. The way he looks at things, like he can't remember what they are and doesn't particularly care. This world, the real world, to him, it's like walking through mist and all the people are like shadows. Just shadows in the fog. I mean, tonight, right? I walked out after 20 years. And you know what I bet he's doing? His big emotional reaction? He's either smartening up for his TV interview or watching quarks get stuck to Gluinos. Maybe both. So, uh, where will you go? Do you have any place to stay tonight? Yeah, well, I guess I'll splash out on some overnight accommodation and think things through. Just a hotel or someplace. Somewhere normal. Ah, <sighs> Dan, I'm sorry. I've turned up in hysterics when you were probably about to dress for going out. Tonight, I'm only calling on Hollis, and he doesn't care how people dress. Now, you drink this while it's hot. Here's looking at you, kid. You know, sometimes I look at myself and I don't understand. Sometimes I look at myself and think, how did everything get so tangled up? Come on. I'm holding you up from visiting Hollis. Grab your coat and I'll walk over there with you. Don't you want your coffee? Nah, I'm sorry. It's too bitter. Well, if you're sure you wouldn't rather sit and talk, Hollis would understand if I was late. Dan, listen, it's almost 6.15 already, and you know New York on a Saturday night. Sometimes the cabs just disappear, and getting from A to B takes forever. Well, I'm all through here. You're safe as houses. What happened, anyway? You get robbed. Uh, no, no, uh, a friend. He called when I wasn't expecting him. Ha! I got buddies like that, always turning up drunk, completely out of the blue. I heard what you said about cabs. Why don't you call my brother's company, the Promethean? It beats walking. These are bad neighborhoods. That's okay. I'm in a bad mood. Oh, so Dr. Osterman finally arrives and nobody thinks to tell me. Marvelous! He just appeared. I feel sick. They're not paying me enough for this. They're not paying me enough to handle monsters from outer space. You haven't left us time for makeup. That blue is far too light for television. Dr. Osterman, I'm Forbes Army Intelligence. Here's a list of no-go areas. Obviously, Afghanistan will arise, but play it cool. And try not to get into any tight corners. Is this dark enough? My god. Ah, uh, well, yes. That's just perfect. That's certainly dark enough for my purposes. If the Geneva talks come up, the official position is that they can't resume until the Soviets agreed to exclude you from the agenda. Shh! We're on? Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're ready to start, and believe me, we have something really special for you tonight. In his first ever, 
live question and answer session. Let's have a big hand, please, for Doc Manhattan himself, Dr. Jonathan Osterman. What's up, Doc? Up is a relative concept. It has no intrinsic value. Uh, right, okay. So let's get on to the questions. You, over there. Uh, Doc, if the Reds act up in Afghanistan, will you be prepared to enter hostilities? As far as I know, there is no situation in Afghanistan currently requiring my attentions. Okay, fine. Now, how about you over there? Yes, you, sir, and please, let's try and keep it snappy. <laughs> Dr. Osterman, I'm Doug Roth. I wonder if you remember Wally Weaver. Back in the early 60s, the newspapers called him Dr. Manhattan's buddy. He died of cancer in 1971. I believe it was quite sudden and quite painful. I remember Wally as a good friend. I attended his funeral. Really? How about Edgar W. Jacoby, also known as Moloch? You encountered him several times during the 60s in battles, conflicts, whatever it is you super people do. Did you know that Jacoby also has terminal cancer? Moloch? No. No, I didn't know that. Uh, I'd rather not. What's the matter, Doctor? Am I starting to make you feel uncomfortable? Then how about this one? Did you know that Miss Janie Slater linked romantically with you in the 60s is currently suffering from lung cancer? Doctors have given her six months to live. Notice any connection? Janie? But I wasn't told. Uh, are you suggesting... Okay, that's it. No more questions. The show's over. Also, we have reports of more than two dozen other past associates similarly afflicted. Come on, let's get out. The mob's getting aroused. Do you think you gave Miss Slater cancer by sleeping with her? No, please, if you'll let me through. Let him through. He's not here to answer questions on intimate moments. How does it feel to know that you may have doomed hundreds of people? Please. If everybody would just go away and leave me alone. Gentlemen, I think it's safest not to pursue this line of thinking. Dr. Manhattan, how often do I you say, leave me alone? Jesus, us getting mugged. Look, I'm shaking. Once the adrenaline wears off, I always feel sort of weird. Sort of empty. Why not visit Hollis and get your breath back? Uh-uh. I've had enough superhero stuff for one day. I'm gonna find a hotel and think my relationship over. See if I can come up with one good reason to stick around. Anyway, you take care of yourself, Dan. It's a tough world out there. Yeah. Well, you too, Lori. Bye. Danny, how are you? You're late. I thought you'd had an accident. No, no, I just had a little skirmish. You're not the only one. i just been watching Doc Manhattan on TV. He teleported everybody out of the TV building, cameras and all. But, but I was just with Lori. She doesn't know. Well, she'll know soon enough. That show went out on prime time. The whole world will know soon enough. Ah, I knew it. Will you look at that? The freighter's murderous onslaught had surprised us. We'd been blasted to fragments before we could warn David's town of the hell ship's approach. Cancer. I might have known. I thought of my family, vulnerable, unsuspecting, never dreaming that damnation bore down upon them. Crazed with helplessness, I cursed God and wept, wondering if he wept also. Hey, it's raining. Lend me your cap, man. No chance. But then, what use his tears if his help was denied me? In this world, you shouldn't rely on help from anybody. In the end, a man stands alone. 
In the terrible silence, I understood the true breadth of the word isolation. What are you doing? I, I was painting up this w w warning notice a as ordered. It seems I'm incapable of cohabiting safely, either emotionally or physically. Perhaps you'd best tell Miss Uspechik and your superiors that I'm leaving. Leaving? Yes. For Arizona first, I think. And then Mars. Holy Christ! Sergeant! That night I slept badly beneath cold distant stars, pondering upon the cold distant God in whose hands the fate of Davidstown rested. Was he really there? Had he been there once, but now departed? The morning sun found me no more wise, no less troubled. Further down the shore, several of the beached corpses had become inflated by gas. You seen this? He's gone. New Frontiersman says it's the Russians. I set about burying the sodden carcasses, matching odd limbs as best I could. With them, I buried all hope for my family's survival. I mean, what's next, you know? Give me a gazette as well. I see the world didn't end yesterday. Are you sure? I had never seen so many dead people. By dusk, the crater was deep enough, and I commenced hauling those cold, maimed, wretched things into the bed I had prepared. Dragging and cursing, I hoped my wife and daughters might be tucked in by gentler hands when their turn came. I began to weep again. Dear God, who would protect them? Hey, are you back again? Listen, when are you thinking of paying for that funny book? The freighter was almost upon them. Gone? What do you mean, he's gone? Haven't you read the papers? Dr. Manhattan left Earth. Now please, we have to give you a cancer scan and ask some questions. Cancer scan? What is this? Who are all these people? Leave that alone. That's my mother's. Miss Uspechik, we have to ask. Did you place Dr. Osterman under any emotional stress last night? What? Are you blaming me for something? Who, who do you think you are? Listen, when John gets back, you're in big trouble. Listen, lady. If our psychologists are right, John is quite possibly never coming back. Your meal ticket has flown the coop. The linchpin of America's strategic superiority has apparently gone to Mars. But you're right. I am in big trouble, and you're in big trouble. And we're all in big trouble. Woman. Good morning, Daniel. Brought you your Sunday paper. The comedian murdered, Dr. Manhattan exiled. Two of us gone, all within a week. Who next? Vite, Uspechik, me. You. By the way, you need a stronger lock. The new one broke after one shove. My new lock? Poor choice. Get more expensive one. Can't be too security conscious. These days, nobody's safe. Be seeing you. Thanks for the coffee and cereal. 
You know, superheroes are finished. These days, it's all pirates. Exhausted, I slept atop the grave, dreams ringing with the horribly familiar screams of children. I saw the black freighter bearing down on all I loved, but I was powerless to stop it. Continued next month. Hey, man. Rip-off story ain't got no ending. Thanks, Chuck. Just left hanging with that ship coming in, gonna kill everybody. Shit. I'm going home. Oh, Jesus. Giant pirates. You can keep it. What? No. Uh, no, you... You can have it. N and you can have my cap, too. Listen. You get home to your mom, okay? You be good to her. I mean, I mean, we all gotta look out for each other, don't we? I mean, th that's my philosophy. Hey, thanks for the stuff. You take care, man. Yeah, yeah, you do. I mean, life's too short in a final analysis. Mr. President, the latest analysis is through. If the Soviets continue into Pakistan, it's 60% certain they'll try taking Western Europe also. If he wanted to live on a red planet, he should have stayed home. Well, General, what do you think? We can be ready for a first strike within seven days. I'd advise against leaving it longer. We have a 54% chance of wiping them out before half their birds are airborne. I'm talking total devastation. Hmm. And would our losses be acceptable? Any moment now, we'll be able to give you an overview. Ah, there we are. Uh, Britain down, Germany down. Well, I've seen worse scenarios. Is that some heading for our east coast there? At this point in our contingency plans, where should we be? Somewhere else, Henry. Uh-oh, there goes Boston. And New York, Baltimore, Washington. Wow. That's, uh, that's pretty breathtaking. I'll say. Do you have a projection of the fallout drift from that? Coming up now. I'd always kind of hoped that the big decision would rest with somebody else. This is going to take some thinking about. It's like old naval battles. So much depends upon a quirk of the wind. The wind's a force of nature. It's totally impartial totally indifferent. I think we'll give it a week, gentlemen, before bringing out our big guns. After that, humanity is in the hands of a higher authority than mine. Let's just hope he's on our side. The photograph is in my hand. It is the photograph of a man and a woman. They are at an amusement park in 1959. In 12 seconds time, 
I drop the photograph to the sand at my feet, walking away. It's already lying there, 12 seconds into the future. 10 seconds now. The photograph is in my hand. I found it in a derelict bar at the Gila Flats test base 27 hours ago. It's still there, 27 hours into the past. In its frame, in the darkened bar, I'm still there, looking at it. The photograph is in my hand. The woman takes a piece of popcorn between thumb and forefinger. The Ferris wheel pauses. Seven seconds now. It's October 1985. I'm on Mars. It's July, 1959. I'm in New Jersey at the Palisades Amusement Park. Four seconds. Three. I'm tired of looking at the photograph now. I open my fingers. It falls to the sand at my feet. I'm going to look at the stars. They are so far away, and their light takes so long to reach us. All we ever see of stars are there old photographs? I am 227 million kilometers from the sun. Its light is already 10 minutes old. It will not reach Pluto for another two hours. Two hours into my future, I observe meteorites from a glass balcony, thinking about my father. 12 seconds into my past, I open my fingers. The photograph is falling. I am watching the stars. Halley's Comet tumbles through the solar system on its great 76-year ellipse. My father admired the sky for its precision. He repaired watches. It's 1945. I sit in a Brooklyn kitchen fascinated by an arrangement of cogs on black velvet. I am 16 years old. It is 1985. I am on Mars. I am 56 years old. The photograph lies at my feet falls from my fingers is in my hand. I am watching the stars admiring their complex trajectories through space, through time. I am trying to give a name to the force that set them in motion. It is August 7th, 1945. The Brooklyn morning is humid and the fire escape door has been left open. John, where are you? In here. I'm practicing on your old pocket watch. Forget pocket watches. Have you seen the news? News? They dropped the atomic bomb on Japan. A whole city gone. This changes everything. There will be more bombs. They are the future. Father, what are you doing? I'm doing what is best for you. This atomic science, this is what the world will need, not pocket watches. Hey, give me that back. Professor Einstein says the time differs from place to place. Can you imagine? If time is not true, what purpose have watchmakers, Hein? Wait, don't. My son must have a future. Father, no. Forty years ago, cogs reign on Brooklyn. 115 minutes into the future, the meteorites hail down through the rarefied atmosphere of Mars. It is 1948, and I am arriving at Princeton University. It is 1958, and I am graduating with a PhD in atomic physics. The cogs are falling. It's May 12th, 1959, my first day at Gila Flats. Professor Glass is shaking my hand asking Wally Weaver to show me around. I'm 30 years old. So you're this new guy from Princeton we heard about, huh? Say, wasn't Einstein at Princeton? Not while I was. Heard him lecture once, though. Gee, that must have been something. You know, I heard he argued with his wife. Crazy, huh? A guy like that, a genius. Even he couldn't figure women. Well, I guess he's just human like everybody else. This is where they're doing the intrinsic field experiments. It's like, what if there's some field holding stuff together, apart from gravity? And this? This is our time lock test vault, so that when they're trying to separate objects from their intrinsic fields, no radiation gets out. Come on, I'll show you where the real heavy duty thinking gets done around here. We call it the bestiary. Wally steers me from the Arizona sunlight into the crowded bar. There's a sudden sensation of deja vu. 
I've seen this place before. Janie Slater, meet John Osterman. John's from Princeton. Oh, the new guy. You're replacing Hank Meadows, right? I am? I guess so. Hank died last fall, some kind of tumor. There's his picture behind the bar there, the guy with the glasses. Can I get you a drink? She buys me a beer, the first time a woman has ever done this for me. As she passes me the cold, perspiring glass, our fingers touch. It's 1963. We're making love after an argument. It's 1966, and she's packing, tearful, careless with anger. It's July 1959. I'm returning to New Jersey on vacation. Janie shares the trip from Arizona. Her mother lives in Jersey. She calls home from the station, but nobody answers. We visit the amusement park, killing time until her mother returns. Hey, young lovers, hold it. But we're not. By the shooting gallery, Janie's watch band snaps. Before I can pick it up, a fat man steps upon it. I tell her I can fix it. Her mother still isn't answering. We decide to call again from my hotel. We both know what's going to happen. Events mesh together with soft precision. It's 1959, a pulse flutters in her belly, beneath my cheek. It's 1966, the suitcase won't shut and she's crying. It's 1985, in 100 minutes the meteorite shower begins. It's August, 1959, we've been back from Jersey a month. In my future, the accident is waiting for me. John, did you fix my watch yet? Yes. I left it in my lab coat when we were resetting the IF chamber this morning. The accident is almost upon me now. slams behind her. There's something in my pocket. I take it out to examine. Good as new. The air grows too warm too quickly. I want very much for a beautiful woman to hand me a glass of very cold beer. All the atoms in the test chamber are screaming at once. The light, the light is taking me to pieces. September. A token funeral service is being held. There's nothing to bury. It's October. Janie places our jersey snapshot behind glass in the bestiary. It's the only photograph of me anyone has. It's November. Did you read about this communist guy who's running Cuba? This Castro? I thought I'd just about seen it all. It's November 10th now. There's a circulatory system walking through the kitchen. November 14th. Really, it's just a question of reassembling the components in the correct sequence. It's November 22nd. Something's haunting us. It's October 1985. I'm basking in the two million year old light of Andromeda. I can see the supernova that Ernst Hartwig discovered in 1885, a century ago. It scintillates, a wink intended for the trilobites, all long dead. Supernovas are where gold forms, the only place. All gold comes from supernovas. It's Christmas 1959. 
Do, do you like it? I like it very much. Its atomic structure is a perfect grid, like a checkerboard. It's... Janie, what's up? Are you cold? I can raise the temperature. No, I'm not cold. I'm scared. Of me? No, yes. Oh, God. Look, I... I'm just scared because everything feels weird. It's as if everything's changed, not just you, everything. I mean, I don't know what you are. Nobody does. They say you can do anything, John. They say you're like God now. I don't think there is a God, Janie. If there is, I'm not him. I'm still the same person. Nothing's changed. I still want you. I'll always want you. As I lie, I hear her shouting at me in 1963, sobbing in 1966. My fingers open. The photograph has fallen. It's February 1960, and everything is frozen. I am starting to accept that I shall never feel cold or warm again. Perfect! When we go public next month, every magazine in the world's gonna want these pictures. How do you like your costume? Pretty slick, huh? I don't like it, especially this helmet. What's this symbol stand for? Ah, well, it means, like, atoms, atomic power, like that. It's meaningless. A hydrogen atom would be more appropriate. I don't think I shall be wearing this. The marketing boys say you need a symbol. If I'm to have a symbol, it shall be one I respect. There. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. People will remember it. When they see it, they'll think of Dr. Manhattan. Dr. what? They're shaping me into something gaudy and lethal. It's all getting out of my hands. We repeat, the Superman exists and he's American. According to Pentagon sources, this astonishing individual can control atomic structure itself. There has been no response from the Kremlin as of this time. The superhuman, codenamed Dr. Manhattan, has not spoken to the press. Instead, we ask those costumed vigilantes remaining from the 1940s masked hero fad how they felt. Well, uh, we're pleased, obviously. Very, very pleased. Well, you know, they say he walks through walls and stuff. I'll believe it when I see it. Huh? You knocked them all dead. You've arrived. Have I? Sometimes I feel as if I've been here all the time. I'm there now, in 1960, saying those words, watching that TV set. Now it's June, a charity event with several costumed adventurers attending. Friendly, middle-aged men who like to dress up. I have nothing in common with them. Only the youngest, called Ozymandias, seems interesting. It's November. The newspapers call me a crime fighter, so the Pentagon says I must fight crime. In Moloch's underground vice den, the sighs turn to screams of terror. The morality of my activities escapes me. It's September 1961. John Kennedy is shaking my hand, asking what it's like to be a superhero. I tell him he should know, and he nods, laughing. Two years later in Dallas, his head snaps forward and then back. Two shots. In May 1962, a masked man retires to open an auto business. His real name is Hollis Mason. We are talking after a civic banquet in his honor. Dallas is still 18 months away. See this? Almost makes me sorry I'm quitting this ridiculous business. Then why have you chosen to retire now? Is it your age? Partly. Partly, I guess it's you. With someone like you around, the whole situation changes. You can do anything. All I got to offer is a good left hook. Nah, I'm better off retiring, writing my autobiography, repairing folks' cars for them. Cars are something I'm happy with. And it'll be a while before even you affect General Motors. Well, the new electric cars should be even simpler. Electric? That's right. They'd have appeared before, 
but there wasn't enough lithium to mass produce polyacetylene batteries. Of course, I can synthesize it easily. Anyway, it's been interesting meeting you again. I hope you enjoy your retirement. Y yeah. Yeah, I hope so too. 18 months away, an electric limousine is pulling onto Dealey Plaza. So, what you're saying is you knew he'd get shot? John, I, I mean, if you're serious, I mean, why didn't you do something? I can't prevent the future. To me, it's already happening. John, what are you saying? That you know the future? About everything? About us? In 1959, I could hear you shouting here now, in 1963. Soon we make love. Just like that? Like I'm a puppet? Your prediction's way off, mister. No. We make love right after Wally arrives with the earrings I ordered for you. Shut up! You're messing up my mind, John. John, I, I'm scared. Will you hold me, please? It's 1963. An hour into the future, her sweat cools and dries in the November bedroom. It's 1964. I'm informing the Pentagon that I'll no longer be wearing the whole of my costume. It's 1966. I'm in a room of people wearing disguises. A very young girl sits to my right. She looks at me and smiles. In 1985, my hands are encircling her face. What's the matter? You were staring at that girl is the matter. Now pay attention. She's beautiful. After each long kiss, she plants a smaller, gentler one upon my lips, like a signature. In 1966, the masks are still squabbling. Soon the meeting breaks up. Janie's voice is cold, furious. Outside, Janie accuses me of chasing jailbait. She bursts into angry tears, asking if it's because she's getting older. It's true. She's aging more noticeably every day, while I'm standing still. 1966. It's nice of you to come out on patrol with me. My mom taught me everything she knew, but I'm still pretty new to all this. You pig. I, I don't know what I should call you. My name's Lori. Do you have another name, apart from Dr. Manhattan? Yes. My name's John. You tell her. You tell her what it's gonna be like when her face wrinkles up and her boobs start sagging and you're still goddamn 30. It's 1959. Janie is handing me the glass. It's 1966 and she's packing, tearful, careless with anger. The photograph lies in the sand at my feet. In 1969, I'm receiving news of my father's death. In 1959, he's opening a telegram from the military informing him of his son's accidental disintegration. I never correct their mistake. Gila Flats closes down in 1970. On Lori's 20th birthday, we move into our new Washington apartment. I've revealed my true name to the public. After father's death, there seems little point in concealing it. In January 1971, President Nixon is asking me to intervene in Vietnam, while 10 years earlier, Kennedy is avoiding any mention of Cuba. Later in November, I'm told that Wally Weaver has died of cancer, aged 34. It's March. I'm in Saigon, being reintroduced to Edward Blake, the comedian. He works mostly for the government now. I suppose I do too. Blake is interesting. I have never met anyone so deliberately amoral. He suits the climate here, the madness, the pointless butchery. As I come to understand Vietnam and what it implies about the human condition, I also realize that few humans will permit themselves such an understanding. Blake's different. He understands perfectly and he doesn't care. It's May. I have been here two months. The Viet Cong are expected to surrender within the week. Often, they ask to surrender to me personally, their terror of me balanced by an almost religious awe. 
I am reminded of how the Japanese were reported to have viewed the atomic bomb after Hiroshima. It's June. It's October 1985. Deciding to create something, I turn away from stars that may have burned out eons ago. I no longer wish to look at dead things. It's 1975. The papers are full of the president's proposed constitutional amendment allowing him to run next year for a third term. Amidst all this, the unmasking and retirement of Ozymandias goes almost unnoticed. His real name is Adrian Veidt, a self-made millionaire. After retiring from adventuring, he invites Laurie and me to visit him at his Antarctic retreat. Oh, what is it? It's beautiful. That's Bubastis. She's a genetically altered lynx. I hadn't realized that eugenics was so advanced now. It's leapt forward in the last 15 years. Everything has, from quantum physics to transport, and we owe it all to you. With your help, our scientists are limited only by their imaginations and by their consciences, surely. Let's hope so. His eyes are sad and knowing. It's 1985. Choosing a spot to begin my creation, I sit down. Pink sand lies pooled in my blue palm. This deserted planet, it is so wonderfully, completely silent. In 1977, a city is shouting. Claiming that costumed adventurers are making their job impossible, the police are on strike. Everyone is frightened, scenting anarchy. Look, look at that freak. It's against God. I'd best do something. Pay attention. You will all return to your homes. Oh, yeah? And what if we don't, you big blue fruit? You misunderstand me. It was not a request. Jesus. August 3rd, 1977. The emergency bill proposed by Senator Keene has been passed. Vigilantism is now illegal again. As long as I continue to act under U.S. government supervision, I am exempt from the law. They can hardly outlaw me when their country's defense rests in my hands. Blake is also exempt. Later, after his handling of the Iranian hostage situation, even his harshest critics fall silent. Lori still hates him, however. She herself has been forced to retire by the Keene Act, but having never really enjoyed the life, she doesn't mind. Her mother is more disappointed than she is. The new Night Owl has stated that he will be retiring, although he will not be making his identity public. The only other active vigilante is called Rorschach, real name unknown. He expresses his feelings toward compulsory retirement in a note left outside police headquarters along with a dead multiple rapist. It's 1981 now. Lori and I are settling into our new quarters at the Rockefeller Military Research Center in New York. Lori feels we've lost our privacy. She'd like it here. Through my blue fingers, pink grains are falling, haphazard, random, a disorganized stream of silicone that seems pregnant with the possibility of every conceivable shape. But this is illusion. Things have their shape in time, not space alone. Some marble blocks have statues within them, embedded in their future. In New York, we go walking. The streets smell of ozone rather than gasoline. Flat, intangible blots of gray slide across the summer sidewalks, the shadows of overhead airships. In 1959, a child is weeping for its lost balloons. Any moment now, Janie's watch band will break. Somewhere, the fat man is already lumbering toward the shooting gallery, steps heavy with unwitting destiny. It's August, 1985. I'm walking through Grand Central Station with Lori. We stop at the newsstand and buy a copy of Time magazine commemorating Hiroshima week. On the cover, there is a damaged pocket watch stopped at the instant of the blast. Face cracked, hands frozen. It's Saturday, October 12th, 1985, and we are being informed of Edward Blake's murder. Lori's mood seems restless for the remainder of the weekend. Wednesday, the 16th, Lori is visiting her mother while I attend Blake's funeral. 
A thin man in a black coat leaves roses, then walks away. Do I know him? Saturday the 19th now. My hands encircle Lori's face. In 1959, I am telling Janie I shall always want her. It's later. Lori is walking out on me. On a rooftop in the past, I pull her 16-year-old body to me, breathing her perfume, never wanting to lose her, knowing that I shall. Later still, and in the crowded TV studio, I am being accused of killing those closest to me. I am tired of this world, these people. I am tired of being caught in the tangle of their lives. In Arizona, I'm entering the ruined bar with a sensation of deja vu, and I'm taking the snapshot from its broken frame. And I'm gone. Gone to Mars. Gone to a place without clocks, without seasons, without hourglasses to trap the shifting pink sand. Below me, in the sand, the secret shape of my creation is concealed, buried in the sand's future. I am ready to begin. A world grows up around me. Am I shaping it? Or do its predetermined contours guide my hand? In 1945, the bombs are falling on Japan. The cogs are falling on Brooklyn. Seeds of the future sown carelessly. Without me, things would have been different. If the fat man hadn't crushed the watch, if I hadn't left it in the test chamber, am I to blame then, or the fat man, or my father for choosing my career. Which of us is responsible? Who makes the world? Perhaps the world is not made. Perhaps nothing is made. Perhaps it simply is, has been, will always be there. A clock without a craftsman. I am standing on a balcony of pink sand hardened to glass. It glitters in the 10 minute old sunshine. The light of two hours past will just be reaching Pluto. If they have strong telescopes there, they can see me. The photograph in my hand, falling, lying in the sand at my feet. I am standing on a fire escape in 1945, reaching out to stop my father, take the cogs and flywheels from him, piece them all together again. But it's too late, always has been always will be too late. Above the noticed Gordii Mountains, jewels in a makerless mechanism, the first meteorites are starting to fall.
Hello? I know somebody's there. Hello? Oh, I see. Okay, if that's how it is. You think I'm scared, huh? You think I'm scared of some shaky little junkie with a switchblade? Is that what you think? I checked. Very bad. Also, you're sweating. Should cool down. What do you want with me? Thought we might discuss Comedian. He visited here, mentioned a list. You and Janie Slater on it. Talked about someone messing with Dr. Manhattan. Days later, Manhattan forced into exile. Allegations he'd given people cancer. You, Janie Slater. Tough break. But I don't understand. Why are you laying all this heat on me? Because I think Blake's list was cancer list. Somebody wrote it, gave it to the media. Wonder who? Funny, Dr. Manhattan and Comedian were always your biggest enemies. Now they're both gone. Very convenient. Who is it, Moloch? Who's behind this? I... I don't know. I already told you. I don't know anything. No good. Wrong tone of voice. Not convincing enough. Oh, no. Rorschach, please. It wasn't me. I don't know who it was. Hmm. <sighs> Better. Going now. If anything should refresh memory, contact me by leaving note. Trash can opposite Gunga Diner at 40th and 7th. Sorry about mess. Can't make omelet without breaking few eggs. Rorschach's journal, October 21st, 1985. Left Jacoby's house, 2.35 a.m. He knows nothing. He has simply been used. By whom? Russians seem obvious choice. Manhattan and Comedian both key military figures. But Comedian referred to an island. Artists and writers living on it. Doesn't fit. Walked home past trash cans stuffed with rumors of war. Weighing factors, bodies, motives. Waiting for a flash of enlightenment in all this blood and thunder. He said there was going to be war with the Russians. Said he wanted to spare the little ones. Dominic, it's just, just three. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Hurst, no more questions. Jesus, what happened? Guy worried about nuclear war. Killed both kids in front of their mom. Then opened his jugular. There's going to be more like this. Yeah, well, me, I think it's astrological. Halley's Comet is coming back around now. That's an omen of doom. Yeah, so's Russia invading Afghanistan. Ah, that'll blow over. World War III, it'll never happen. Nobody's crazy enough. Boy, what did he use on these? 
kitchen knife. Don't let this ruin your day. These psych-outs are mostly media-inspired. The media inspires boredom, not waking up one Monday morning and butchering your kids. That takes something else, man. That takes a whole different kind of inspiration. My home and family were doomed. My world reduced to ruin. The same waves gnawed my island and Davidstown alike. Yet swimming would surely be madness. Hey, Daiki, quit splashing. Where should I recharge? Now quit obstructing the current. Got today's gazette? Sure. This war's looking serious. Makes a guy start figuring escape routes, you know? I mean, my father. When things deteriorated in 30s Germany, he split. Sure. In World War II. In World War III, where's to split too? It was then I conceived of building a raft. Although inwardly, I doubted it would float. Anyways, see you next delivery day. Yeah, sure. Suddenly, I recalled the gas-bloated stomachs of the buried men, then shuddered at the idea I found myself considering. Where's to split too? Finally, approaching the shallow grave, I began digging. My scheme was loathsome, but I had no choice. Not when I considered the nature of my situation. Everything I loved, everything I lived for, depended upon my reaching Davidstown in advance of that terrible freighter. Clinging to the memory of my wife's eyes, I dragged men up from underground. Removing their clothing, I tore it to ribbons, binding them together. By afternoon, I'd felled enough young palms to build the deck of my conveyance, affixing it to the human float beneath. Satisfied, I waited for dusk and ebb tide, then embarked heading east. East, across the night seas, east, born on the naked backs of murdered men. With dawn came the gulls. Lent speed by my hunger, I was able to rip one from the air. I had not eaten since the shipwreck. Stomach filled with raw meat, I drifted on towards my home. Nothing would take it from me. They say I can't live there anymore now that John's gone. It was just, okay, we're taking your home and money. Chew on that. So, where will you stay? Did you call your mother? Oh, she'd love that. I'd sooner sleep on a grating. Nah, I'll get by. Anyway, thanks for buying me lunch. I better go find a cheap room somewhere. I... I guess I'll see you around sometime. Sure. Bye, Dan. Uh, Lori, wait. Y you know, there's a... There's always my place. Oh, I, I couldn't impose. Oh, it'd be no imposition. I, I have a lot of room there. I mean, we're both friends. We're both in the same line of work. We're both, uh, we're both, we're both leftovers. Rorschach's Journal, October 21st, 1985. Woken at 11 by shouting outside, disturbed to find I had fallen asleep without removing the skin from my head. Tireder than I thought, should be more careful. Across street, Boys with spray cans were defacing abandoned building, memorized their descriptions, then prepared for work. First, peeled off face, folded it, hid inside jacket. Without my face, nobody knows. Nobody knows who I am. On way out of room, met landlady. Usual complaints regarding hygiene and rent. There were purple bite marks on her fat white neck, fresh ones. She reminds me of my mother. Out in street, inspected defaced building. Silhouette picture in doorway. Man and woman, possibly indulging in sexual foreplay. Didn't like it. Makes doorway look haunted. On 40th and 7th, saw Dryberg and Uspechik leaving diner. They didn't know me. An affair, perhaps. Did Uspechik engineer Dr. Manhattan's exile to make room for Dryberg? Also, she hated comedian, must investigate further. Entering diner, bought coffee, then sat watching my mail drop immediately across street. Passers-by made various deposits. This city is an animal, fierce and 
complicated. To understand it, I read its droppings, its scents, the movement of its parasites. I sat watching the trash can, and New York opened its heart to me. Tell you the truth, this whole bloody mess, it gives me a funny feeling inside, you know? There was a gull in my stomach. It's like, I don't know how long we can hold on. The enormity of my savage breakfast struck me, and I grew faint. I'd swallowed too much bird flesh. I'd swallowed too much horror. World War III, it's a nightmare. Everything tilted. Above, scavengers wheeled hungrily, just screams dressed in feathers. I mean, don't people see the signs? Don't they know where this is headed? Hey, man, I'm reading. See? Apathy. Everybody escaping into comic books and TV makes me sick. I fell, retching to my knees. Lightheaded, I gazed into the inverted world beneath, where drowned gulls circled. A madman with blood-caked lips gazed back at me. See, news vendors understand. They get to see the whole picture. It's a curse. We see every damned connection. Time's running out, Mr. Veit. You better hurry. Yes, yes, I know. It's the toy people I have to see this morning, isn't it? That's right. They want some new characters. Maybe some of your major villains or something. The major villains are all dead. Oh, wow. What is it with everybody today? Everybody's on this total death trip. I think maybe it's the decor around here. All this Egyptian stuff, it's very morbid, very obsessed with death. Death wasn't morbid to the ancient Egyptians. They saw it as launching on a voyage of spiritual discovery. Don't you find that a comforting thought? Are you kidding? I mean, losing 10 pounds, that's a comforting thought. My next raise is a comforting thought. Spiritual discovery, on the other hand. Oh, God! Open it. He's got a poison capsule. Don't bite down. I want to know who's behind this. Damn. Call the toy people and cancel the extension of the Ozymandias line. If they ask why, just tell them I don't have any enemies. During the afternoon, I dozed fitfully, my enemy's hideous banner flapping dismally in my dreams. War, child murder, attempted assassination, this front page is a nightmare. That death's head banner, it flies above us all, and the heads nailed to the ship's black prow, those heads are our heads. Truly, we exist upon the whim of murderers. I mean, who'd want to kill a guy like Adrian Veidt? He's a real hero. Did charity work, revealed his name like he had nothing to hide. Jeez, where's it gonna end? I awoke at dusk and drank a little salt water. I have heard that on less than a pint daily, a man might survive. Beneath my raft, something moved. You never know. You never know what's bearing down on you. Like this guy killed his kids. A week ago, there was a normal family. Irrationally, my first thought was of the corpses attempting to clamber up into the air. But no, something had brushed beneath me. All we see is what's on the surface. I bet there's all kind of stuff we never notice. Until it's too late. Ahead, in the darkening water, shadowy forms approached. Were they boats come to rescue me? No, not boats. Fins. Rorschach's journal, October 21st, 1985. Someone tried to kill Veidt. Proves mask killer theory. Murderer is closing in. Checked mail drop. Message from Moloch. Connected, perhaps. Next, went to retrieve face from Alley. Over 40th Street, an elephant was drifting. Beyond that, unseen spy satellites. This relentless world. 
there is only one sane response to it. The alleyway was cold and deserted. My things were where I'd left them, waiting for me. Putting them on, I abandoned my disguise and became myself, free from fear or weakness or lust. My coat, my shoes, my spotless gloves, my face. Had three hours before calling on Moloch, away down alley, heard woman scream, first bubbling note of city's evening chorus, approached disturbance, and attempted rape, mugging, both cleared throat. The man turned and there was something rewarding in his eyes. Sometimes the night is generous to me. Dan, really, you don't know how grateful I am for this. After where I thought I was going to be sleeping tonight, this is like heaven. Well, you know, it isn't much, but it should be comfortable. And I'm sleeping right down the hall if you need anything. Uh, like coffee or aspirin, stuff like that. Oh, I'll be fine. I'm so tired. Thanks for looking out for me, Dan. You're like a big brother, you know that? Sure. Well... Glad I could help. Good night, Lori. Good night, Dan. Sweet dreams. Hell and damnation. Good readers know this. Hades is wet. Hades is lonely. Teeth that seemed to move independently of the lifts tore at my raft's supports. I clung to my mast as the platform tilted further. The water began to boil white. The yellow leviathan attempted to swim away, dragging my raft in its bloody wake. I hung on desperately, cursing in the bitter stinging spray. This goddamn pain in the butt rain, don't it ever let up. This old job's like paddling against the tide. Eventually, the shark died, and shortly thereafter, stopped swimming. Man, cab driving's busting my nuts. Give me a copy, Hustler. Hi, Joey. How's the Promethean still bringing light to the world? Well, we sure need light after this Afghanistan crap, Ola. Who's this month's centerfold? The other sharks circled. They worried the morsels from my raft. That reminds me, I got a poster maybe you could display. After eating, they departed, replete. For the moment, I was safe. That night, eating shark, I would have chuckled at the inversion of natural roles had not my parched laughter seemed so hateful. Is this a joke? Gay women against rape? It's a benefit gig. Now you're gonna nail it up? Or am I gonna alter your looks? Bringing light to the world, my ass. You know, the way the world is today, I guess none of these messiahs and illuminated types really amounted to a whole hill of beans. That's the phone. There's never been any market for peace and enlightenment. You know, all today, I've had this funny feeling. It's like there's something in the air. First that kitty murder, then somebody tries to whack Adrian Vite. It's like there's a pattern leading somewhere. It's... Steve, will you just answer the goddamn phone? Hello? Yeah, Detective Fine speaking. A uh, tip, sure. What's your name? No name. Ah, uh, okay, that's acceptable. So what do you have? Raw what? Raw shark? Why would I want to know where to find... Raw shark. Yeah, understood. We're on our way. Bye. Steve, you're kidding. That wasn't about damn right it was. After all these years, somebody just handed us that bastard's head on a plate. Come on, man. Let's go ignore some red lights. Good evening, Jacoby. Got your note. B-1. 
Been wondering why you wanted to see me. Somebody tried to shoot the world's smartest man today. Hear about that? Somebody's killing masks, Jacoby. Somebody wants us dead. Maybe some old enemy. Maybe someone you met in prison. Maybe you can enlighten me. This is the police, Rorschach. We know you're in there. It's all over. Now, if there's anybody in there with you, I want you to send them out first unarmed. No. No, no, no. Framed, set up. Walked right into it. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Come on, Rorschach. Let's make this a nice, clean surrender. Uh, never, never surrender. Coming in. I hope you're ready. When you are. Go in there. He better be here. If that was a bum tip, we'll take the ground floor first and work up. And remember, here be tigers. Smoke. He's <coughs> he's just ahead on the <coughs> on the third floor. Okay, he's up here somewhere. And I don't like this. Can't see. Get up. Get his mask off. Get that sucker off his face, man. No, 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 no. My face. Give it back. Well, who is he? Who is he? This ugly little zero is the terror of the underworld. And we're gonna lock him up with them. It's karma, man. Everything evens out eventually. Everything balances. From the notes of Dr. Malcolm Long, October 25th, 1985. First interview with Kovacs. Okay, now, I guess you know what this is. He's even more disturbed than I'd heard, but I'm optimistic. A success here could make my reputation. I want you to look at it and tell me what you see. He's very withdrawn, with no expression in either face or voice. Getting a response is often difficult. Will you look at it, Walter? Will you do that for me? Physically, he's fascinatingly ugly. I could stare at him for hours. 
except that he stares back, which I find uncomfortable. Nevertheless, I'm convinced I can help him. No problem is beyond the grasp of a good psychoanalyst. Well, Walter, what is it? A pretty butterfly. His responses to the Rorschach blot tests were surprisingly bright and positive and healthy. I really think he might be getting better. I just wish he wouldn't stare at me like that. His full name is Walter Joseph Kovacs, born 1940. Mother's name, Sylvia Joanna Kovacs, formerly Sylvia Glick. His father's name is unknown. Let's try another, shall we? How about this one? He's five feet, six inches tall and weighs 140 pounds. For his age, he's in excellent physical shape. The police have beaten on him pretty badly. During the police strike of 77, he made several inflammatory anti-cop statements and they've never forgotten. The cops don't like him. The underworld doesn't like him. Nobody likes him. I've never met anyone quite so alienated. Come on, Walter. Do it for me, huh? Walter. How on earth did he get like this? Okay, Walter. Now, I want you to tell me what's on the card. Tell me what you see. Mm. 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 Oh, you're hurting me. Oh, not so fast. You're... Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, what is this? Oh, God. You didn't tell me you had no kids around here. I get enough of this crap at home. Oh, baby, please listen. He's kind of backwards. Please, don't get mad. Here's five bucks. It's more than you're worth. Five bucks? You bastard! Get out of my way, retard. Mom, I'm sorry. I thought he was hurting you. You little shit! You know what you just cost me? Mommy! <laughs> well, Walter? What do you make of it? Some nice flowers. Wonderful. Walter, I'm very pleased with your responses. I really think there's hope, don't you? Ah, well, okay, Walter. I think that's enough for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. You dead, but man. Rorschach. You Rorschach. Talking to you, runt. Yeah. What's the matter, you thief, or what? I, I have to get something from the store for my mother. I got something I could give you, mama. Everybody else does, way I hear it. Is that right, kid? Is your mama a whore? Sure she is. He's gonna fix this up with her. Ain't that right, whore son? Hey, let me buy. I have to go to the... You don't have to go no place, whore son. <laughs> Look at him. Okay. Probably got, got cooties. Disease. Probably got <laughs> diseases, whore son. <laughs> A mad dog. In 1951, he attacked an older child, partially blinding him with a lighted cigarette. He was 10 years old. Once his home life had been investigated, he was put into care. He seemed to improve. Excelling at schoolwork, Kovacs grew into a bright but unusually quiet child. Even in 1956, when informed of his mother's brutal murder, he restricted his comments to one word, good. 
Mal, are you done with this Rorschach case yet? Not Rorschach. Walter Kovacs. Rorschach's an unhealthy fantasy personality. Are you sure you're safe with this Kovacs guy? Don't worry. While he's at Sing Sing awaiting trial, he's under heavy guard. He's no threat. Not anymore. Well, let's hope not. Now, come on. Forget work. It's a beautiful night. Let's see if we can make it last forever. Good morning, Walter. Today, I'd like... Oh, sorry, late night. Today, I'd like to do something different. Frankly, Walter, I'd like to talk about Rorschach. Will you do that for me, Walter? Will you tell me about Rorschach? You keep calling me Walter. I don't like you. You... you don't like me. All right, all right. We're... Why is that exactly? Fat, wealthy, think you understand pain. I'll tell you something, doctor. I'll tell you about Rorschach. 1956, aged 16, left children's home, became unskilled manual worker. Job bearable but unpleasant. Had to handle female clothing. 1962, special order for dress in new Dr. Manhattan spin-off fabric. Viscous fluids between two layers latex. Customer, young girl, Italian name. Never collected order. Said dress looked ugly. Wrong. Not ugly at all. Black and white. Moving. Changing shape. Very, very beautiful. Nobody wanted it. Meant for me. Took it home. Learned to cut it using heated implements. Soon became bored. Fabric had no use. Two years passed. Stopped at newsstand on way to work, bought paper. There she was. Woman who'd ordered special dress, Kitty Genovese. Raped, tortured, killed. Outside her own apartment building. Almost 40 neighbors heard screams. Nobody did anything. Nobody called cops. Some of them even watched. Do you understand? Some of them even watched. I knew what people were then, behind all the evasions, all the self-deception. Ashamed for humanity, I went home. I took the remains of her unwanted dress and made a face that I could bear to look at in the mirror. A face, I see. Walter, is what happened to Kitty Genovese really proof that the whole of mankind is rotten? There are good people, too. Like... Like you? Me? Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. I... No, you just think it. Why are you spending so much time with me, Doctor? Uh, because I care about you. And I want to make you well. Other people down in cells behave you more extreme than mine. But then, they're not famous. You don't want to make me well. Just want to know what makes me sick. Have patience, Doctor. You'll find out. Of course, what we have here is a classic case of misdirected aggression. Kovacs hated his mother. After her death, he needed somewhere to put the anger, and so he chose the criminal fraternity. The flimsy story about Kitty Genovese is obviously there to justify his behavior to himself. It's perfectly simple. Case solved. You'll find out. I wonder what he meant. Hey, Rorschach. You're pretty famous, right? Boy, you know, I'd sure like your autograph. I got my autograph book right here in my pocket. The guards intervened, dragging Kovacs away to solitary and the other man to the prison hospital. As they dragged him away, Rorschach spoke to the other inmates. He said, none of you understand. I'm not locked up in here with you. You're locked up in here with me. 
My earlier optimism was obviously unfounded. He's getting worse. So am I. Just read back what I've written above. The sixth line down should read, Kovacs spoke to the other inmates. Kovacs, not Rorschach. Mal, you're never going to sleep with all that coffee inside you. I wasn't planning on sleeping just yet. This Kovacs case requires a lot of attention. Remember last night, Mal, when I required attention? Gloria, please. Good night, Mal. You're locked up in here with me, he said. He's right. Absolutely right. All right, Roy. All right, Walter. Uh, this afternoon, I want to pick up where we left off. After the murder of Kitty Genovese, you decided to become Rorschach and... Don't be stupid. I wasn't Rorschach then. Then, I was just Kovacs. Kovacs pretending to be Rorschach. Being Rorschach takes certain kind of insight. Back then, just thought I was Rorschach. Very naive, very young, very soft. Soft? How do you mean? Soft on scum. Too young to know any better. Molly coddled them. Let them live. Well. Looking at your file, there's no record of serious violence against criminals before 1975. Like I say, soft. Hadn't realized the stakes we were playing for back then. All of us, me, my friends, all soft. You have friends? Kovacs had friends. Other men in costumes. All Kovacs ever was, man in a costume. Not Rorschach. Not Rorschach at all. In 1965, worked with Night Owl, bringing street gangs under control. Tackled the big figure together. Brought down under boss together. Good team. Until he got soft like rest. Until he quit. No staying power. None of them. Except comedian. Met him in 1966, forceful personality. Didn't care if people liked him, uncompromising. Admired that. Of us all, he understood most about world, about people, about society and what's happening to it. Things everyone knows in gut, things everyone too scared to face, too polite to talk about. He understood. Understood man's capacity for horrors and never quit. Saw the world's black underbelly and never surrendered. Once a man has seen, he can never turn his back on it. Never pretend it doesn't exist. No matter who orders him to look the other way. We do not do this thing because it is permitted. We do it because we have to. We do it because we are compelled. From the notes of Dr. Malcolm Long, October 27th, 1985, his last words today were, we do it because we are compelled, but he never says what it is that compels him. It's not his childhood, his mother, or Kitty Genovese. Those things just made him overreact to the injustice in the world. They're not what sent him over its edge. They're not what turned him into Rorschach. It's as if continual contact with society's grim elements has shaped him into something grimmer, something even worse. If only I could convince him that life isn't like that. The world isn't like that. I'm positive it isn't. Bought a gazette on way home including a small piece about Kovacs, which the news vendor pointed out excitedly. I guess he does that to everybody. Apparently, Kovacs visited his newsstand regularly. The coincidence is trivial, but unsettling. So was the front page. Russian tanks have entered Pakistan. At home, Gloria seemed anxious to sweeten things after yesterday and told me she'd invited Randy and Diana to dinner tomorrow. 
was too exhausted to take in all the details and suggested an early night. From the notes of Dr. Malcolm Long, October 28, 1985. Today, he told me everything. Hello, Rorschach. How are you today? In prison yourself? Oh, fine. I'm fine. I thought we'd try some more blot tests. How about taking a look at this one for me? Seen this one before? Yes, I, I know. I, uh... I thought you might have been holding back before, and I wanted to try it again. Go on. Tell me what you really see. Dog. Dog with head split in half. I, I see. And, uh, what do you think split the, uh, split the dog's head in half? I did. 1975 kidnap case. Perhaps you remember. Blair Roche, six years old. Kidnappers believed she was connected to Roche Chemical Fortune. Stupid mistake. Father was bus driver. No money at all. Days dragged by. No word from kidnappers. Thought of little child. Abused. Frightened. Didn't like it. Personal reasons. Decided to intervene. Promised parents I'd return her unharmed. Visited underworld bars and began hurting people. Put 14 in hospital needlessly. 15th gave me an address. Disused dressmakers in Brooklyn. Bad neighborhood. Smelled of damp plaster and stained mattresses. Arrived there at dusk, no lights on in building. Something was making noise in wasteland at rear. Attack dogs. Two German shepherds fighting over a knob of bone. Didn't seem interested in me. impact ran along my arm. Jet of warmth spattered on chest like hot faucet. It was Kovacs who said mother then, muffled under latex. It was Kovacs who closed his eyes. It was Rorschach who opened them again. According to my informant, man using premises named Gerald Grice. Out drinking when I called, returned to dressmakers at 10.45. Dark by then. Dark as it gets. Hello, Fred. Barney, I'm home. Come on. Who's got a bark for daddy? <sighs> Ah! <laughs> 
out there. I haven't done anything. I swear. I... <laughs> get it off. Somebody get it off me. Anything. Oh, oh, wait. Look, look. I, I know what you think. You think I'm something to do with that little girl. Well, well you, you can't prove anything. I, I mean, where's the evidence? You, you can't do anything to me. Hey, wait a minute. That's mine. Hey, look, please. If you just say something. Hey! Hey, are you crazy? That's kerosene! Yes. Shouldn't bother trying to saw through handcuffs. Never make it in time. What do you mean? A am I supposed to... Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, no! Y you're kidding! You have to be kidding! Stood in street, watched it burn. Imagined limbless felt torsos inside, breasts blackening, bellies smoldering, bursting into flame one by one. Watched for an hour. Nobody got out. Stood in firelight, sweltering, blood stain on chest like map of violent new continent. Felt cleansed. Felt dark planet turn under my feet and knew what cats know that makes them scream like babies in the night. Looked at sky through smoke, heavy with human fat. And God was not there. The cold, suffocating dark goes on forever and we are alone. Live our lives lacking anything better to do. Devise reason later. Born from oblivion, bear children hell-bound as ourselves go into oblivion. There is nothing else. Existence is random, has no pattern save what we imagine after staring at it for too long. No meaning save what we choose to impose. This rudderless world is not shaped by vague metaphysical forces. It is not God who kills the children, not fate that butchers them, or destiny that feeds them to the dogs. It's us, only us. Streets stank of fire. The void breathed hard on my heart, turning its illusions to ice, shattering them. Was reborn then, Free to scrawl own design on this morally blank world was Rorschach. Does that answer your questions, Doctor? From the notes of Dr. Malcolm Long, October 28, 1985, bought paper. Nixon says U.S. will meet continued Soviet aggression with maximum force. Inside article on nuclear alert procedure, it says that any dead family members should be wrapped in plastic garbage sacks and placed outside for collection. Home. Gloria reminded me that Randy and Diana were coming tonight. Looked cross when I confessed I'd forgotten. We dressed for dinner in silence. Dinner didn't go very well. So, Mal, how are things going with this famous masked maniac of yours? Today, he told me about a girl who got kidnapped. Look, maybe this isn't such a good idea right now. Oh, boy, was she tied up and gagged and helpless? Randy? No. She was six. Her abductor killed her, butchered her, and fed her to his German shepherds. Gloria, where are you going? 
Diana remembered that their babysitter had to be home early, and they left soon after dinner. Gloria went into the bedroom. I followed her. She walked out again into the hall. I sat on the bed. She came in wearing her coat, subjected me to a lot of crude sexual insults, went out, the front door slammed. Why do we argue? Life's so fragile, a successful virus clinging to a speck of mud suspended in endless nothing. Next week, I could be putting her into a garbage sack, placing her outside for collection. I sat on the bed. I looked at the Rorschach blot. I tried to pretend it looked like a spreading tree. Shadows pooled beneath it, but it didn't. It looked more like a dead cat I once found. The fat, glistening grubs writhing blindly, squirming over each other, frantically tunneling away from the light. But even that is avoiding the real horror. The horror is this. In the end, it is simply a picture of empty, meaningless blackness. We are alone. There is nothing else. the dash lighter. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ah. Lori, ah! did you shout? Everything okay down there? Maybe. Or maybe someone's picking off costumed heroes. Oh, God. Laurie! Who next? Vite? You spetchik. Me? You? Laurie! Fire extinguishers! Where the hell are the fire extinguishers? Over here! Oh, damn. I'm really sorry. Hey, it's okay. My fault. I was checking out the systems earlier. I left everything switched on. You're not hurt. Me? I I'm fine. 
But look at your beautiful ship. It'll wipe off. When you screamed, I, I thought, well, you know, ever since the comedian died. Oh, come on, Dan. You're not starting to take Rorschach's mask killer bullshit seriously. Oh, I don't know. It just makes me feel uneasy. You've got some wonderful stuff down here. It's like a magician's cave or something. It used to seem like that to me once. Looking back, it all seems so, well, childish, I guess. Just a school kid's fantasy that got out of hand. That's, you know, with hindsight, uh, on reflection. At least you were living out your own fantasies. I was living out my mother's. You know, I'm really impressed by all this equipment. It must have cost you a fortune. My dad was in banking. He left me a lot of money when he died. <laughs> What's this? That? Oh, that isn't anybody. It's just this vice queen I put away back in 68. Called herself Dusk Woman or something. The Twilight Lady. She sent you her picture? Yeah, well, I guess she had sort of a fixation. She was a very sick woman. I see you have a lot of pictures of birds and stuff. I mostly just like the idea of flying. As a kid, I read about Pegasus, flying carpets, then later about birds and planes. Finally, I mastered in aeronautics and zoology at Harvard. Guess it helped me design this jalopy here. Welcome aboard. Dan, I'm safely on board. You can let go of my hand now. I like the design. All curves and no corners. Having no corners helps makes the ship radar invisible. Radar invisible? What's this closet here? Special auxiliary costumes. What's this green one? Underwater work. Let's see. Flamers functioning, water cannon functioning, public address system and screechers functioning, air-to-air -air missiles functioning. Air-to-air -air missiles? Sure. Button right next to the flamethrower. That's it? I quit. I mean, talk about dangerous habits. I had a dangerous habit myself once. You did? What happened? I quit. Come on. I'm finished here. Take the rear exit so you won't get dirty crawling under Archie. Archie? Oh, uh, well, it's short for Archimedes, Merlin's pet owl. What got you into this business in the first place? Well, I was rich, bored, and there were enough other guys doing it, so I didn't feel ridiculous. I guess Hollis was my hero. He was retiring when I was starting out, so I wrote and asked if I could carry on his name. I remember visiting his garage that first time. I was awestruck. I mean, there I was, hanging out with a real hero, being his friend and everything, being a crime fighter, you know? Like part of a brotherhood or something. That's why I sort of regretted the crime busters falling through. It would have been like joining the Knights of the Round Table. But eventually, I realized the comedian was right. Who needs all this hardware to catch hookers and purse snatchers? Hmm, what's that? Prototype exoskeleton. First time I tried moving in it, it broke my arm. Never again. Jesus, that sounds like the sort of costume that could really mess you up. Is there any other sort? I mean, look at Rorschach. The condition he's in. He was normal once. Sure, he was quiet, he was grim, but he still had all the buttons on his overcoat. Soon after I started out, we blitzed the big figure together. Tactically, Rorschach was brilliant. He was so unpredictable. What I'm saying is, he was rational then. Over the years, that mask's eaten his brains. Did I show you my goggles? An 
No matter how black it got, when I looked through these goggles, everything was clear as day. Oh, damn, this is fabulous. This must be what it's like having powers. You know, special vision and like that. It must be so strange being John. He can see neutrinos. Do you miss John? John? No. Although I keep thinking I should. But you see, even when I was with him, he was never really there. There was no real human contact, no physical contact. I was so lonely. There was nobody to talk to, but I'd always feel like I was under observation. It must be great for you, having a secret identity, a secret place nobody knows about, nobody watching you. Isn't there? These days, I feel like something's watching my every move. Dan, you sound like Rorschach. This mask killer thing, it doesn't hold up. I mean, John left Earth of his own free will. Rorschach was caught red-handed committing murder, for God's sake. Where's the conspiracy? I don't know. That Rorschach murder thing sounded funny. He wouldn't just shoot somebody. It's too ordinary. Well, anyway, it's almost 6 o'clock news time. Want coffee? Sure. Did you see that package that arrived for me? Uh, no, I didn't. Just my clothes, forwarded from Rockefeller, my old costume, stuff like that. Oh, yeah, and a letter telling me I don't have cancer. Hope you don't mind me using your address. Long as you like. Latest in a series of tenement fires allegedly designed to remove sitting tenants. Meanwhile, investigations into captured vigilante Rorschach are continuing. Today, police allowed news cameramen into the apartment used by Rorschach, real name Walter Joseph Kovacs. His landlady, Miss Dolores Sherp, described Kovacs as a Nazi pervert and said that he frequently propositioned her sexually. Ha! I knew it. We asked Hector Godfrey, the Frontiersman's editor, if he had any comment. Frankly, isn't it time we reassessed Rorschach as a patriot, an American? He's not going to be easy for a jury to sympathize with. Dr. Malcolm Long, carrying out the psychiatric examination, has his first interview with Kovacs this afternoon. He told Pressman he felt confident and optimistic. What really worries me is him being in jail. The other prisoners will kill him. Yeah, well, things are tough all over. Meanwhile, in Afghanistan, the fighting spreads. As the conflict moves closer to its borders, Pakistan today called on the U.S. to intervene. Lori, are you okay? Dan, does this sort of stuff on the news scare the hell out of you too, or is it just me? Addressing Congress, President Nixon said that America would consider her options. Thus, while Russia claims to be merely securing her borders, Western experts see only opportunistic hostility in the wake of Dr. Manhattan's departure. I mean, is this another false alarm, or has the big countdown finally started? I don't like thinking about it. At England's Greenham Common base, women peace demonstrators were arrested during scuffles with police. Me, I wish I could just split, like John. Oh, right. The old Manhattan transfer. What? Manhattan transfer? <laughs> and throughout the world, there is tension with no sign of a breakthrough. Meanwhile, at home, police stopped searching for missing writer Max Shea, having failed to open any new lines of investigation. Shea, who wrote children's pirate comics before graduating to modern classics, vanished from his Boston home two years ago. Oh. Why, Mr. Dryberg, you're ravishing. I'm what? While in New York, the Institute for Extraspatial Studies reports exciting and maybe alarming possibilities for opening new dimensions. No, but seriously, you look terrific without glasses. If we could just do something with this stupid hair. Hey, stop that. We spoke to the Institute's chief physicist, Dr. Ed Corey. Well, we're very excited and expecting early success in our search for extra-dimensional energy sources. Our activities are entering spaces we thought impossible. 
And that's the world tonight. After the break, Adrian Veidt's New York Astrodome charity performance. You know your trouble? You're inhibited. Uh, inhibited? Um, uh, in what way? Oh, all kinds of ways. Nostalgia, Veidt Veidt, for unforgettable you. Oh, Jesus, Lori, are you sure you... And now... In a repeat showing of last July's charity spectacular, we bring you Ozymandias himself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, performing live in aid of the Indian famine appeal, we present Adrian Wright, the one, the only, Ozymandias. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I crushing you? And just look at the confidence as he leaps up and grabs the bar. It's all one smooth, seamless flow of motion. Uh, I can't seem to... This is absolutely breathtaking. The grace of each movie is extraordinary. Oh, hell. And he's down. A perfect head dismount. Oh, Lori. I'm sorry. It isn't you. It's just, hey, relax. It's okay. We don't have to rush things. We've got as long as it takes. And don't worry. You're doing fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. And with the 11 o'clock news coming up next, that's all we have time for. So from me, Benny Anger, and the Pale Horse's Red Death, it's thank you and good night. Still nothing? Uh-uh. Oh, meltdown. And that's it from ABC tonight. We'll be back tomorrow morning, but until then, take a break, take a nap, and most of all, take care of each other. Dan, can you move over a little? Um, sorry. I know how it is when something's not right. We'll sleep now, okay? John.
Dan, are you okay? I, I just had a dream is all. We, we were kissing, and then this nuclear bomb. We were gone. Everything was gone. It's this war. The feeling that it's unavoidable. It makes me feel so powerless. So impotent. Oh, Dan. No, listen. It's also this mask killer thing. I mean, seriously. Blake dead, John exiled, Adrian shot at, Rorschach captured. I can just feel this anxiety, this terror bearing down. I came down here for my costume. I just need to take the air to blow away the cobwebs. I maybe take the ship out or something, get myself straight. So, who's to know? What? Who's to know? You said it's radar invisible. Yes, but... Listen, you get the rest of your suit on while I go get dressed. I used to be a masked Avenger too, remember? Let's go. This is great. Remembering which switches, which sequences. It's like the old instincts are imprinted on my fingertips. Damn. What's that, down on our right? Hmm. Tenement building on fire. Looks like people trapped there on the upper stories. Please stay calm. Your predicament has been noticed and the situation is being attended to. All you people in there, please get to the top floor. We'll join you in a moment. I'll extend a ramp from the rear door to a window. Hmm, if I'm gonna be working close to the blaze, I won't need my coat. Well? Whoa. What about the ramp? Oh, oh, right. Sure, the ramp. Hey everybody, coming through. Hi. De uh, Night Owl, there's an awful lot of people in here. No problem. I can make more space by steering up on the roof. The flames are climbing pretty fast. Here's the last one. Welcome aboard. Okay, let's ride. There's a coffee machine behind a panel on the starboard wall. Yeah, I got it. How are you doing up there? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Just fine. The fire department will handle the rest. When your coffee's finished, please head down to the street. Good night now. You know, I can't believe we just did that. You realize they'll probably lock us up with Rorschach. Ah, uh, who cares? World War III could start tomorrow, right? Uh, Lori, what? It's okay.
I thought you'd quit, Maury. Dangerous habits, remember? There's no such thing as quitting. Just sometimes there's a longer pause between relapses, right? Dan, was tonight good? Did you like it? Uh-huh. Did the costumes make it good? Dan? Yeah. Yeah. I guess the costumes had something to do with it. It just feels strange, you know? To come out and admit that to somebody, to come out of the closet. Does it feel good? I feel so confident it's like I'm on fire. And all the mask killers, all the wars in the world, they're just cases, just problems to solve. Hmm. You know, you sound real passionate. I didn't know you could smolder. I'd hoped tonight might wake something inside you, but it sounds like it's awoken with an appetite. You're right. It has a big appetite. Mmm. -hmm. Insatiable, huh? Well, I'm open to suggestions. What shall we do next? I've been thinking about that. And I feel we have certain obligations to our fraternity. I think we should spring Rorschach. What? Hello? Hello, is that Sally? Sally, how are you? I... Hollis. Hollis Mason. Hollis? It's been ages. So how's things? All this time you had my number. You wait till we're both in our sunset years to use it. Well, I reckon this was a special occasion, Sal. Papers report a tenement fire last night. Trapped people rescued by an airship. The pilot wore goggles. Seems he had a woman with him. Lori? My daughter, Lori? But she hated adventuring. Why should she... Living with him? A week after John splits? Jesus, fast work. Takes you back, huh? Yeah, I guess it does. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. How are you, Hollis? Bet you haven't changed a hair? Oh, I've changed several hairs. How about you? From your voice, you're sounding younger than ever. Why, bless you, Hollis. No, I've gained some weight, but I can still squeeze into the old costume if I don't breathe in. You ever try on your old duds? Nah, it's different for guys. I'd feel stupid. Although, uh, all the kids around here are preparing for Halloween next week, so who knows? <laughs> well, if you run into Lori and her new boyfriend while you're bobbing for apples, tell her mom says hi. Jeez. Lori back in costume. Maybe she'll finally thank me for all that training I made her do. Ah, well, you know, kids, no gratitude till it's too late. I was just the same. I often wish I could thank my old man for giving me a career, a living I enjoy. Oh, sure. Choosing the right lifestyle's just so important, and sometimes you need guidance. Mm. Uh, 
Well, listen, it's been great talking to you, Sally, but calling California is expensive. I better go before I put too much strain on my bank account. Yeah, well, that's Nixonomics. We're all feeling the pinch, I guess. Anyway, thanks for the news. You take care now, Hollis. Bye. It's like all our old nightmares come back to haunt us, you know? Adrift and starving, I pictured David's Town's quiet streets overrun by tattooed fiends. Red invasions, masked men, God spare us. I'm just glad my Rosa ain't alive to see. My wife was almost certainly dead. Today would have been our anniversary. I remembered her waving goodbye from the veranda shadows. Dead? She'd have hated how this superhero thing turned out. Those glorious days, that innocence. Dead? Still, that's life. A lot of stuff happens under the waterline. Dead. Hey, see this Rorschach item? He was a customer here. Kovacs. Uh. Yes, incredible, thank you. Dead. Hmm, preoccupied type. World's gone crazy, they don't even notice. Finally, faced with horrors both intolerable and unavoidable, I chose madness. This is insanity. We're young lovers. The world could end tomorrow. And how are we spending Sunday evening? We're planning to bust a homicidal maniac out of Sing Sing. It's not insanity. Something's going on. Four adventurers attacked within 11 days isn't coincidence. Maybe that cancer scare media assault that prompted John's exile was part of somebody's plan. Maybe someone intended to start World War III. Oh, Dan, come on. Maury. You lived with John. You didn't contract cancer from him. Maybe nobody did. My computer lists most people Nova Express mentioned as employed by a research company called Dimensional Developments between 67 and 85. Weird, huh? Janie Slater, Wally Weaver, they even gave Moloch a temporary job when he left prison. They fund the Institute for Extraspatial Studies. Another company, Pyramid Deliveries, funds them. This corporate structure stuff's a maze. Yeah, well, that and your logic both. I mean, why risk springing a liability like Rorschach? Rorschach's been investigating this thing all along. We need his information. And we may not have long to get it. Today's Gazette mentions death threats following yesterday's hot fat incident. It's important, Lori. If John's exile and its consequences were premeditated, Maybe it's the most important thing in the world. Superhero saves world, huh? This is some elaborate scam to get me back into my costume, right? <laughs> Lori, the costume was your idea. What? That's ridiculous. I loathe that Halloween suit. Obviously, I wore it to help you. Oh, obviously. I was thinking we ought to contact Adrian, but maybe not till after the jailbreak. I mean, in his position, knowing beforehand would be compromising. He might feel obliged to stop us. Dan, sometimes I feel obliged to stop us. I mean, a jailbreak? I can't believe we're taking this seriously. Assuming somebody's using John to trigger Armageddon, then how should we take it? It's serious. And for Rorschach, if the mood around that prison gets any uglier, it's a matter of life or death. Hey, look, this is the solitary wing. You're not supposed to be here. How's the wife, Mulharney? Ah, oh, Christ. Look, what do you want? We just want to say hello. Okay, okay, fine. Rorschach, it's been a long time. Big figure, small world. <laughs> Small world, I like that. That's very good. I've been in this small world now for how long is it, Michael? 20 years, Mr. Figure. 20 years. 
It's a long time. You must have thought you could forget what you did to me, you and that owl guy. Funny, ain't it, how... Oh, thank you, Lawrence. How these things come back to haunt us. Incidentally, that guy you burned is dying. See, when he croaks, this place blows. And then you die by inches. Tall order. No, not yet, Michael. I've waited 20 years, there's no hurry. He'll get his soon enough, and nobody is going to care. I hear even his shrink resigned today. You're alone in the valley of the shadow, Rorschach, where your past has a long reach, and between you and it, there's one crummy lock. Excuse me, my name's Detective Stephen Fine. I'm looking for Daniel Dryberg. I'm Dan Dryberg. Uh, you better come in. Well, Detective, how can I help you? Edward Blake, homicide victim. You knew him. Uh, yes, vaguely. You knew him well enough to attend his funeral. I saw the photographs. You, Adrian Veidt, Doc Manhattan. You keep heavy company, Mr. Dryberg. I met Blake through Veidt. I, uh, once donated some money to one of Veidt's charities. Big guy, that Blake for a diplomat. Quite a heroic figure. Funny, there's been a lot of heroic figures in the news lately. There was that thing last weekend, you read about that, that tenement fire. All finished, Mr. Dryberg, you got maximum security. Uh, right, thanks. Craziest story, this airship rescues all these people hovering down between the buildings. Interviewed some witnesses, but the details were garbled. Hey, sweet chariot sugar cubes. Only come in catering packs, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. Why? No reason. You know, the only ship I ever heard of could maneuver between buildings belonged to one of those masked adventurers they outlawed in 77. Couldn't have been him, naturally. He'd be in his 40s now. Listen, what's this about? Ain't about nothing. Just called to see if you knew anything about Blake. I'm afraid not. We weren't close. Uh, that leads to the lumber room. Key's lost, I'm afraid. No sweat. I gotta go anyway. You know, rescuing fire victims, nobody condemns that. But if it went any further, those characters, that dame, the Silk Spectre, where's she now, I wonder? And Rorschach. Eh, know what he had in his pockets when we collared him? Sugar cubes. Weird shit, huh? I'll be seeing you, Mr. Dryberg. Dan? Time's running out. Suddenly, we have a deadline. October 31st, 19... 85. Seymour, where's the pictures? Uh, right here, Mr. Godfrey. Well, don't just stand there like an asshole. We still need that filler in back. Something out of the crank file. Uh, is this okay? It's addressed to the people of the United States of America. Sure, fine, whatever. Where the hell is that other picture? And find the pictures of our missing writer follow-up. My God, this piece is hot. Will this picture do of the writer? I know we used it before. Huh. Appropriate material for the Halloween edition. Still sketching, Ms. Manish. I am. I just needed some final studies of the facial assembly. You're blocking my light. Oh, I'm sorry. Please excuse an old drunk who's just daydreaming about getting back to the mainland. Three more days. How can you draw it under that tarpaulin? They lifted it for me to see the big structure. It's beautiful work. I tell you, this place, goddamn paranoid movie companies, it's like being shipwrecked. I remember, I wrote this story once. More pleasant than your current one, I hope. Illustrating that sequence where the young chew their way out of their mother's womb was quite an experience. There, finished. Shall we go and wave our baby goodbye, Mr. Shea? Baby? <laughs> okay, come on. Let's give the Taika a final once-over. My opinion, nuclear war is quite possible within the next 10 days. Thank you, Professor. 
Meanwhile, as public resentment grows towards masked heroes, police admit having no evidence to support rumors of vigilante involvement in Saturday's tenement rescue. There, like Rodan, huh? Just coming in, the prisoner scalded by captured vigilante Rorschach died this afternoon. Fearing a riot, prison spokesmen say they're looking into the jaws of hell. Pretty good. Can hardly wait till it's dark. Gazette? Sorry, pal. Should be here any minute. You want to wait? Give me a gazette. I want to look in apartments to rent. I busted up with a lean. Hi, here they are. Oh, Jesus. Sing Sing erupts. Captured vigilante sparks riot. Five dead. Well, I guess that's it. I guess the balloon's gone up. Figure you better let us at him. Yeah, we want a peace figure. Sure. Thanksgiving's early this year. It's just, I get to carve. Lawrence, hurry the goddamn arc welder up. I want to take my time over this. Well, Rorschach, here it is. Halloween, when the dead things return and devils are free to roam the night. What's a matter? Too warm in there? Gonna get plenty warmer. Right. Hey, boss, you notice? Suddenly, he ain't giving you no tall order, small world shit. Maybe he figured out that once we slice these bars, we're gonna make him a little shorter. Fat chance. Fat? You lousy little bastard. We got a jail full of guys out here hating your guts. What in hell do you got? Your hands. My perspective. Oh, shit! My fingers! He broke my fingers! Michael, reach through there. Cut what's tying him. I can't reach. Unfortunately, Lawrence is in the way of my revenge. Kill him. Nothing personal, Larry. What do we do now? We're gonna cut through there, and then that bastard's gonna find out what the score is. One nothing. Your move. Come and get me. Almost in. Just hurry. Never disposed of sewage with toilet before. Obvious, really. Two nothing. Your move. It's some sort of power failure. Dan, this is horrible. Old grudges get worked out in these things. Old grudges and bad blood. How are we supposed to find him? He shouldn't be too difficult to track down. All this stuff, this horror and madness, he attracts it. Well, did we find the right cell? Is he there? No, but I think he's been here. Come on, if we don't find him soon, our whole plan is in the toilet. him along there I, I'm not sure hey Rorschach is that yes yes it's you excuse me I have to visit men's room oh for Christ's sake ah look it's okay I mean it happens to everybody right I remember once I lost a big arrest like that I was closing on this dope dealer and I needed to take a leak by the time I got in and out of my costume he vanished I redesigned it since then Oh, sure. Everybody's done that. What pisses me off, we came to rescue him. He doesn't even thank us. 
At last? Shh. There. Did what had to be done. Can leave now. Really? I mean, are you sure? We don't want to get too reckless and go diving headfirst into things. Hmm. Good advice. Sure there are many who'd agree with you. Incidentally, good seeing you in uniform, Daniel, like old times. And Miss Uspechik, although never liked your uniform. Nothing personal. What brought you out of retirement? Taking Masculer seriously at last? Well, no. Leastways, I'm not. No? But then you haven't been attacked yet. Funny. Most everyone else has. What's he implying? I just don't buy this conspiracy is all. Dan thought springing you might help. I played along. Frankly, I wish I hadn't. I wish John was here to straighten everything and... Oh, Dan, I'm sorry. Forget it. Here's Archie. You know, this is getting heavy. As Dan Dryberg, you'll be wanted. The world should last so long. No, it's okay. I set up emergency identities years ago. They'll conceal us. Hold tight. We're going home to roost. Uh, Lori? Is everything okay? Yeah, it's just catching up with me. The jailbreak, this war thing, everything's just so shitty. I guess I want somebody to wave a wand and make it all better, you know? Listen, I have to collect some junk from the living room. Hello. John? Oh, Jesus. They said you were on Mars. I am on Mars. Now I believe we have a conversation scheduled. You want to talk to me? Yes, I was just thinking. But John, how did you know? An hour into my future, we're on Mars talking. I thought I'd collect you in readiness. Mars? Oh, no. You're kidding. Why Mars? Lori? Who? Because that's where I am. You're going to try to convince me to save the world. John, Ori, what's happening? Dan, he just appeared. He wants me to go with him. I, I think I better do as he says. People outside, Daniel, police. Ori, wait. It'll be okay, Dan, really. You take care. Hammering now, best hurry. Ori, don't. <laughs> Where is Miss Uspechik? She... She won't be traveling with us. Come on! They could still be here! You're telling me your new Dryberg was this owl man and you never... I thought a warning would be enough. very least. Our damnation. It obsessed the sodden dead, dominating their bubbling dialogues. Yeah, and it's his fault, Dr. Blue-Ass Manhattan. Hey, Durf, on the radio, you hear what went down? Some super duper sprung that blot face guy. They spoke of a heaven where once we all lived and died, sentenced for our sins to this pandemonium we call the world. Sprung him? Those bastards, they do whatever they like. Yeah, some owl character did it. Night owl? My dad knows him. Lives over some garage near here. We ought to go kick his ass. I could endure no more, though dreading such a black, breathless end, I leapt. Feet first into horror. Feet first into cold and dank mortality. But the water's surface seemed as stone beneath my timber-blistered soles. What new torture was this? I stood upon the calm sea, a charnel messiah unable to sink beneath it to the oblivion I craved. I lifted my uncomprehending eyes to the heavens and saw instead the earth. My lurching journey through darkness was ended. It meant that I had reached my destination. They'd left me for dead.
the fiends who doubtless butchered my kin, but now I was returned upon my corpse boat. A terror they'd imagine themselves safe from, a specter of revenge riding the flow tide home. All right, all right, I hear ya. I'm coming. Happy Halloween, kids, I... Durf, what did you do? Shut up. We're finished here. Mr. Mason, it's us. Same as last year. Trick or treat? Mr. Mason? What's happening? Dan, he just appeared. He wants me to go with him. I, I think I'd better do as he says. People outside, Daniel. Police. Lori, wait. It'll be okay, Dan, really. You take care. Hammering now. Best hurry. Lori, go. Like it. Lori. Lori, what's oh, of course, please forgive me. Sometimes these things slip my mind. <laughs> Jesus, John, you stupid bastard, you... <laughs> Lori, are you all right? Of course I'm not all right. I'm throwing up. You know, I always throw up whenever you take me anywhere. Oh, shit. I'm on Mars. Of course. It is here on Mars that we debate Earth's destiny. John, please. I mean, this just... Being here, it's giving me problems, okay? I can't take your predestination trip right now. Why does my perception of time distress you? When I left you, when Nova Express attacked you, you were surprised. Why? If you knew it would happen. Everything is preordained, even my responses. 
and you just go through the motions, acting them out? Is that what you are? The most powerful thing in the universe, and you're just a puppet following a script? We're all puppets, Lori. I'm just a puppet who can see the strings. We shall go up to the balcony. You can see the Notice Gordai Mountains from there. Well, what if I don't? What happens if I just stay down here and screw all your predictions, huh? What happens then? John? This is where we hold our conversation. It commences when you surprise me with the information that you and Dryberg have been sleeping together. Y you know about me and Dan? No, not yet. But in a few moments, you're going to tell me. John, what are you trying to do to me? When you're like this, I can't even talk to you, let alone debate the... what was it? Destiny of the world. Destiny of the world. This is ridiculous. Why hold a debate when you already know the goddamn outcome? Because, because that's how it happens. I know, I know. Listen, John, okay, I'll play it your way, but you have to help me understand. I mean, I can't tell the future. There is no future, there is no past, do you see? Time is simultaneous, an intricately structured jewel that humans insist on viewing one edge at a time when the whole design is visible in every facet. What is your earliest memory? Huh? My earliest memory? I, I don't know. Around when my folks split up, I guess. I can remember a toy, one of those snowstorm balls, but no, no, it's gone. It isn't gone. It's still here. Let yourself see it. Well, I... I was five, something like that. I must have got woken up. There was shouting downstairs. My mom and dad... God, I can hear them now. Shouted at him. He looked surprised. Couldn't imagine why I'd bear a grudge. And I just couldn't sustain it. The anger. God, you know, really, you need analysis. I'm serious. How would you know how a woman feels? Shit, how a man feels, for that matter. Oh, that's cheap. Even for you, that is cheap. You wanted to hear, so okay, you listen. First off, he was there, right? Plus, he was gentle. You know what gentleness means in a guy like that? Even a glimmer of it? It means you reach some of that magical romance and bullshit that they promise you when you're a kid. It also means a broken marriage, an uncertain future for our child, my child. That's what all this is about, remember? Don't you worry about her future. That's taken care of. Nobody knew I was there. These moments were just mine. Everything felt secret and enchanted. And there was this toy this snowstorm ball with a tiny castle inside. It was like a little glass bubble of somewhere else. I knew it wasn't real snow, but I couldn't understand how it fell so slowly. I figured inside the ball was some different sort of time, slow time, and then... Laura Jane? Oh, huh? what are you doing down here? What, Larry? Don't you dare take this out on her. She's only a kid. She's vulnerable, fragile, and inside, there was only water. My dad yelled and sent me to bed. He was always yelling, probably because he knew I wasn't his. My real dad, I'm pretty sure, was mom's old boyfriend, who did justice. I see. Then your mother's husband wasn't. Ah, look over there, a dust storm rising. Yeah, very nice. No, Schexnader wasn't anything except a domineering bully. He really used to pick on me. That's probably why I'm edgy in relationships with strong, forceful guys. I mean, with Dan, it isn't like that. As a lover, he's more sort of receptive. You mean that you're sleeping with Dryberg? B but you already know. I mean, you said... I said often that you were my only link, my only concern with the world. When you left me, I left Earth. Does that not say something? Now you have replaced me, and that link is shattered. Don't you see what that means? Don't you see the futility of asking me to save a world that I no longer have any stake in? John, don't be ridiculous. Earth's too important to hinge on one relationship. Not to me. My red world here means more to me than your blue one. I will show you around it if you wish. Oh, no. I've had enough of that. Throwing up and you forgetting I need to breathe. I'm not doing any more hopping around. As you please. I 
need a drink. What's in the bottle? What do you want to be in the bottle? What do... Uh, water. Just water. As you wish. John, I... I just can't take this. Sightseeing on Mars, drinking instant water, when down there the missiles could be flying right now. Humanity is about to become extinct. Doesn't that bother you? All those people dead? All that pain and conflict done with? All that needless suffering over at last? No, no, that doesn't bother me. All those generations of struggle, what purpose did they ever achieve? All that effort, and what did it ever lead to? I enjoy reminiscing every once in a while, but what's the point? All those years, we worked our asses off, but what did we achieve? Well, I'm proud of what I achieved. I'm sitting in it. And as for what I achieved it with, I'm sitting on it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Better clean up your act, Sal. We got company. Ah, she's heard it all before. Hi there, sugar tush. How'd the workout go? You gonna be a big, tough super lady like Mom? Yeah, I guess. Add a girl. Now, let me see. Uncle Hollis, you know. But this big honk over here, this is your Uncle Nelson. You've seen the picture. Oh, yeah, Captain Metropolis. You were skinnier back then. Ah, well, listen, Sally, I'd better go check outside. He should arrive soon, and I promised I'd meet him. Hi there, pumpkin. So, did you read my book yet? Book? Sure, Under the Hood. I gave Sally one to pass on. I, uh, I didn't give it to her yet. I figured she's young. She don't want to read that old stuff. Maybe when you're older. Mom, I'm 13. Why can't I read Uncle Hollis's book? I do all this training to be a costume hero. I can't even read about them. Ah, uh, now, honey, maybe Mom knows best. I guess I wasn't thinking. Well, I just guess you weren't. Hey, everybody. Look who made the reunion after all. Byron, oh, Byron, it's so good to see you. Can we fix you a... Uh... Just a club soda for Mr. Lewis. My friends, oh, my friends, what time is it? A uh, high time we all got together is what it is. Here's your soda, Byron. Mom, who? Shh, an old friend. I'll explain later. Jesus, is that what I'm training for? What I got to look forward to? Lori, shut up. Byron's fine. He just... I... I'm just sorry. I'm sorry for us all. Uh, Byron, careful. Y your glass, you're spilling everything. Lori, are you listening to me? I was asking the point of all that struggling, the purpose of this endless labor, accomplishing nothing, leaving people empty and disillusioned, leaving people broken. Okay. Okay, I'll admit lots of people have messed up lives that don't accomplish anything visible, but but don't we have some importance beyond that? I mean, just the existence of life isn't that significant. In my opinion, it's a highly overrated phenomenon. Mars gets along perfectly without so much as a microorganism. See, there's the South Pole beneath us now. No life, no life at all but giant steps 90 feet high, scoured by dust and wind into a constantly changing topographical map, flowing and shifting around the pole in ripples 10,000 years wide. Tell me, would it be greatly improved by an oil pipeline? John, in those terms, sure, mankind hasn't helped the environment, but against that, you have to measure the lives of artists, scientists, poets, hell, even my life. That has to be worth something. Without life, there wouldn't even be an environment. Your definition is narrow. Life insisting on life's viewpoint when alternatives exist. Those jumbled box canyons below, where volcanoes boiled the permafrost into scalding geysers, once they could have been fountains of life. The ground crumbled when the subterranean ice melted, releasing torrents of water to form vast rivers, now long dry. Life could have flourished here then, but Mars did not choose life. It chose this. It's called chaotic terrain. Yeah, well, ordinary life, my life, that's got chaotic terrain too. I mean, you're so fascinated by rocks getting twisted into weird shapes. Jesus Christ, you should have seen me before I met you. My mother, she eroded my adolescence, chipping me into the shape she'd have been if she hadn't had me. She pushed me into adventuring, fussing over my career, trying to live her life through me. 
Remember the crime busters thing in the 60s? Did I tell you she drove me there in a limo and waited outside like it was my first screen test or something? I was 16. I felt like a jerk. I remember staring at you. I just couldn't get used to you. I mean, you had a great body, but, you know, it was blue. Your girlfriend, Janie, she glared at me all the way through. Then it collapsed. Everybody leaving, except Nelson and Adrian. Big disappointment. Outside, I watched them go. I felt let down, restless, horny, and I needed a cigarette. I was leaving Nelson's mansion, and somebody called my name. Laurel? Laurel Jane, is that right? So, you're Sally's kid. Uh, yeah. I caught your act in there. You were pretty cool. Wow. You don't look like you grew up too bad yourself. Here, let me take a look. <laughs> yeah, there's her eyes. You even got that funny little mole. You ain't got her hair, but otherwise, you're like her. You're a looker. Uh, say, I, I need a cigarette, but I don't have a light. Do you? Sure. Hey, listen, your mom, she talk about me much? No, not much. <laughs> it figures. Here's your light. I, hell, on out here. Let me. You take your hands off her. Uh, hi, Sal. Long time no see. Not long enough in my book, Eddie. Laurel Jane, you put that thing out and come here immediately. We're going home. And as for you, are there no depths you won't sink to? Christ, we were just talking. And a guy talk to his, you know, his old friend's daughter? I mean, what do you think I am? I know what you are, Edward Blake. I've known what you were for 25 years, and don't you ever forget that. Get in the car, Lori. Sally, listen. I thought we'd settled that a long time ago. No, things like that don't ever get settled. Not completely. And they're not going to happen to my daughter. We drove away in silence. He looked sad. I felt sorry for him. Of course, then, I didn't know what the bastard had done. We drove three blocks, and then she pulled the car over and just sat there, and it all came pouring out. Her pain, her fears, her whole life, you know? I mean, ordinary people, right? All the things that happened to them. Doesn't that move you more than a bunch of rubble? No. I read Adam's Lord. I see the ancient spectacle that birthed the rubble. Beside this, human life is brief and mundane. Oh, I give up. This is just rounded circles. Can't you tell me how this conversation ends and spare me the agony? It ends with you in tears. Look there. Olympus Mons approaches. Tears? You, you mean I lose? You mean you don't come back to Earth? I return to Earth at some point in my future. There are streets full of corpses. The details are vague. No. Oh, no, John. What do you mean, vague? There's gonna be a war? A real war? Oh, God. I'm not sure. There's some sort of static obscuring the future, preventing any clear impression. The electromagnetic pulse of a mass warhead detonation might conceivably cause that. Oh, no. Beyond that, events grow even sketchier. I am standing in deep snow. I am killing someone. Their identity is uncertain. Look at it. A volcano as large as Missouri. Breathtaking. Breathtaking? John, what about the war? You've got to prevent it. Everyone will die. And the universe will not even notice. We've been through this before, Lori. You argued that human life was more significant than this excellent desolation, and I was not convinced. You attempted to compare the mere uncertainty in your existence with the chaos of the world beneath us. But where are the pinnacles to rival this Olympus? Where are the depths to match those of... Ah. But we near the Valles Marineris. You may see for yourself. It stretches more than 3,000 miles, so that one end knows day while the other endures night. Temperature differences breed shrieking winds that herd oceans of fog along a canyon four miles deep. Does the human heart know chasms so abysmal? Yes. Yes, mine, right now. John, you've seen people depressed. Me, when I'm miserable, when I've had too much to drink. Yes, I remember a banquet in 1973. Oh, don't remind me. I acted like an idiot. But I guess that's in keeping with the rest of my life, huh? I mean, you say it's all worthless, right? That we're all blind, stupid things stumbling through our lives, hopelessly lost in the fog? The fog I was lost in that night was scotch mist. I must have drunk half a bottle. 
It was a dinner in honor of Blake. I remember thinking, why? Why all this sudden popularity? Nixon wasn't there, but everybody else was. Ford, Liddy, Al Haig. Ford shook Blake's hand. Everybody seemed real pleased with him, but not me. See, by then I'd read Under the Hood about him assaulting my mom. That banquet, it was the first time I'd seen him since I found out. And I was mean drunk. See those post reporters they found in that garage, Woodward and what's his name? Jewish name, Bernstein. Yeah, I understand the underground papers are already yelling conspiracy. Well, Eddie, any opinions? That piece in the Berkeley Barb? Well, I guess you smoke enough weed you can imagine almost anything. Nah, I'm clean, guys. Just don't ask where I was when I heard about JFK. <laughs> That's good. Dick will love that. Miss Uspechik, good to see you. Uspechik, what's that? Grandmother's name? Didn't like Jupiter, huh? Didn't take your old man's name either. What's my name to you? Nothing. You know, you're a pretty girl. I just gotta look at you. I see your mom. <laughs> you know, your mother, she was a peach. Is that what you told her before you tried to rape her? Before you hit her? Before you kicked her? That isn't the way you treat peaches? Kid, are you sure you want to take this all the way? Damn straight I do. I mean, what kind of man are you? You have to take some woman? You have to force her into having sex against her will? Only once. Only once. As if, you know, it was better than doing it twice or 50 times. And his scar. It always looked like he was sneering. Had seven scotches inside me, one in my hand. I let him have it. And then you came, and you were angry, and you took me home. It was the first time you ever teleported me anywhere. First time I threw up. But I mean, why bother telling you all this? It just confirms things, right? All these wretched, grubby little human encounters. Better off without them. None of it ever meant a damn thing anyway. I mean, these, my mother's clippings, her whole life, right there. What's it mean? In your terms, next to a, a neutrino, next to something you can't even see, for Christ's sake, it means nothing. Lori, don't Lori me. It's pointless debating when you obviously don't see anything terribly miraculous in life. Maybe quantum physics doesn't allow miracles. No, thermodynamic miracles are... Oh, for God's sake, John. Just land this thing, now. As you wish. You can take me back to Earth to fry with Dan and my mom and all us other worthless humans. The conversation's over. And listen, you were wrong, see? You said it ended with me in tears, and look at me. Not a moist eye in sight. You were wrong about that. Maybe about a lot of things. I mean, maybe you were wrong about the streets full of corpses, too. John, can you hear me? Perfectly. Oh, Jesus, John. Lori, you complain, perhaps rightly, that I won't see existence in human terms, but you yourself refuse to consider my viewpoint, letting your emotions blind you. Look at yourself, angry, shouting. Shouted at him. He looked surprised. Couldn't imagine why I'd bear a grudge. And I just couldn't sustain it, the anger. If you'd only relax enough to see the whole continuum, life's pattern or lack of one, then you'd understand my perspective. You're deliberately shutting out understanding as if you're afraid, as if you're too delicate. Mom, I'm 13. Why can't I read Uncle Hollis's book? I do all this training to be a costume hero. I can't even read about them. Ah, uh, now, honey, maybe Mom knows best. I guess I wasn't thinking. I'm through thinking about my life, looking back on all my stupid memories. It's been a dumb life, and if there's any design, it's a dumb design. I don't want to see it, I don't want to talk about it. Christ, we were just talking. And a guy talked to his, you know, his old friend's daughter? I mean, what do you think I am? I think you're avoiding something. Don't be stupid, there's nothing to avoid. His old friend's daughter? What do you think I am? I have... I've never had any occasion to avoid the truth. Only once. His old friend's daughter? And a guy talked to his, his old friend's daughter? I mean, look here. My life, my mom's life. There's nothing there worth avoiding. It's all just meaningless. You know, his old friend's daughter? No. No. 
No, not him. Not... No. 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 No, she wouldn't. She couldn't have. Not after he... couldn't sustain it. The anger you think I am. No. Talking. No, you're not. You're not. No. You're not my father. My father. And a guy talked to his, you know, his daughter. No! And there was this toy, this snowstorm ball, with a tiny castle inside. It was like a little glass bubble of somewhere else. I knew it wasn't real snow, but I couldn't understand how it fell so slowly. I figured inside the ball was some different sort of time. Slow time. And inside, there was only water. Lori, are you all right? Of course not. Blake, that bastard, and my mother, they... They pulled a gag on me is what they did. My whole life's a joke. One big, stupid, meaningless... Oh, shit. I don't think your life is meaningless. Oh, no, well, obviously, that's what you're going to say, because anything I'm stupid enough to believe is true, you just disagree with it, and... Uh, you don't? No. But listen, you've just been saying life is meaningless. So how can... I changed my mind. But why? Thermodynamic miracles. Events with odds against so astronomical they're effectively impossible, like oxygen spontaneously becoming gold. I long to observe such a thing. And yet in each human coupling, a thousand million sperm vie for a single egg. Multiply those odds by countless generations against the odds of your ancestors being alive, meeting, siring this precise son, that exact daughter, until your mother loves a man she has every reason to hate, and of that union, of the thousand million children competing for fertilization, it was you, only you, that emerged. To distill so specific a form from that chaos of improbability, like turning air to gold, that is the crowning unlikelihood, the thermodynamic miracle. But if me, my birth, if that's a thermodynamic miracle, I mean, you could say that about anybody in the world. Yes, anybody in the world. But the world is so full of people, so crowded with these miracles that they become commonplace. And we forget, I forget. We gaze continually at the world and it grows dull in our perceptions. Yet seen from another's vantage point, as if new, it may still take the breath away. Come, dry your eyes, for you are life, rarer than a quark, and unpredictable beyond the dreams of Heisenberg, the clay in which the forces that shape all things leave their fingerprints most clearly. Dry your eyes, and let's go home.
Force One, Air Force Two, confirmed. Landing strip, the President and Vice President are confirmed. Please confirm copter reception. Copters confirmed. Proceed to entrance alpha. Entrance alpha, standby. party is now inside the complex. Mr. President, you were able to see Mrs. Nixon to safety, I take it? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Pat, she, uh, that is, Mrs. Nixon, she's okay now. How are things hanging here? Well, as you know, I see no profit in employing mad bomber tactics. Don't, don't you start that mad bomber shit. That whole image, it was your suggestion. Now, what's the latest? East Germany tanks massing allegedly in response to Western alarmism. Uh, that might possibly be genuine. This last week we've both been on full alert. The question is, what do we do next? We do what we came down here for. We stay at DEFCON 2. And we sit. And we wait. How much longer? Tired of skulking down here. Impatient. Work to be done. Rorschach, everybody's looking for us. We'd better be careful. Down here, hours already. Need to collect spare uniform and personal effects so that we can proceed. All right, all right. That's what I'm doing. We're near the wharves backing onto your neighborhood right now. I'm taking her up. At last. It feels good to be working with you again, Daniel. Pity Mr. Spetchik couldn't stay with us. Yes, yes, it's a pity. So, assuming your spare outfit's where you left it, where do we start? Make inquiries amongst Underworld. Whatever's behind elimination of masked heroes is something big. Makes ripples. Out there, somewhere. Somebody knows. Yeah, I guess so. Also, with this masked killer thing, we should contact Adrian. Yes. Perhaps you'll be less dismissive of idea after attempt on own life. The thing is, we've got so little time to figure out who's doing this. I mean, neutralizing John, framing you, we're talking somebody major. Yes, all accomplished so easily. Lesson in vulnerability. Must be more careful in future. The future? What future? That's my whole point. We're looking at World War III within the week. I mean, what do we do? The stakes are so high, and humanity is so close to the edge. Some of us have always lived on edge, Daniel. It is possible to survive there if you observe rules. Just hang on by fingernails, and never look down. Huh. Still here. Good. Police didn't find it. <clears throat> exactly what uh, personal effects were you looking for? Spare clothes, spare face, final draft of journal. Police only found rough notes. There. Think that's everything. We... Oh, God! I... I don't want any trouble, okay? I... Mrs. Sharp, long time no see. Told press I'd made sexual advances to you. Not true. Very bad. No, I, I never said that. I got misquoted. Rorschach, come on, man. Leave it. Can't. Serious business. Slur on reputation. How much did they pay you to lie about me, whore? Oh, please, don't say that. Not in front of my kids. Please. They... They, they don't know. Got what we came for. Finished here now. Let's go.
Welcome back, sir. It is good to have you safe with us. We received bulletins from New York. The attempted shooting? Ah, oh, yes. Yes, these are dangerous times. Hello, Vastus. Hello, old girl. Do you still wish to study the monitors and record your observations before dinner? No, let dinner wait. The work comes first, as ever. There are things to do, problems to solve. Incidentally, did the delivery run smoothly in my absence? Oh, yes. We three supervised the reception unaided as instructed. The monitors have been prepared, sir. How many screens did you wish to view? All of them. Random channel change every hundred seconds. I need information. Information in its most concentrated form. Hmm, let me see. First impressions. Oiled muscle man with machine gun. Cut to pastel bears, valentine hearts. Juxtaposition of wish fulfillment, violence, and infantile imagery. Desire to regress, be free of responsibility. This all says, war. We should buy accordingly. I think I'm ready to begin recording now. Very good. We shall retire and leave you to your work. We know that you prefer to be alone down here. Yes, that's right. All alone. Just me and the world. Hate this. All day on riverbed. Drowned corpses more useful. You said we could proceed. These computer searches, I've been running our procedure. When it's dark again, we'll go up. This is no picnic for me, either. Implying something about coat, perhaps. Old, slightly musty. Apologies. I wasn't... Look, I just meant we took enough unnecessary risks retrieving your outfit this morning. Cowering down here in sludge and pollution, conjuring names on screens, learning nothing, that is unnecessary. Give me smallest finger on man's hand, I'll produce information. This face, all that's necessary. All I need. That's bullshit. You needed darkness to work with, just like I do. Right now, I need some pattern that makes sense of the data we have. The comedian mentioned an island and some plot against John. My computers suggest John could have been set up, possibly by the company all his supposed victims worked for. Possibly. We should ask questions in the underworld. Isn't that what I'm doing? You waste time looking for pattern when pattern is obvious. The mask killer. If you listen, that's what I'm trying to say. What if there is no mask killer? Look. The comedian learned accidentally about some island, some scheme against John. The plot against John comes first. Blake's killed when he discovers it. Who knew Blake suspected anything? This dimensional developments company employed Moloch. Maybe his place was bugged when Blake visited. That'd also explain how they knew about your investigations and were able to frame you without requiring any mask killer. And fight? Hmm. Adrian's a problem. That was a clear-cut assassination attempt. Exactly. So trace killer, visit bars, squeeze people. Been lazing around a long time. Maybe you've forgotten how we do things. Lazy? Listen, I've had it. Who the hell do you think you are? You live off people while insulting them. Nobody complains because they think you're a goddamn lunatic. You know how hard it is being your friend? Daniel. You are a good friend. I know that. I am sorry that it is sometimes difficult. Ah, hey. Hey, forget it. It's okay, man. It's okay. Ah, uh, well, anyway, there's... <clears throat> there's no sense waiting down here any longer. I mean, down here in this junk garden. Is this any place to hold the reunion of the Night Owl Rorschach team? Let's go up to visit the criminal fraternity and really start plumbing the depths. You know, some nice straightforward brutality? Hell, it'll be like coming home. I was returned. Splashing noisily through the encumbering shallows, sun mulling the horizon behind me. I could be no more than 20 miles from David's town. I was home. In broad, charcoal strokes, night shaded the sky. 
By now, David's town was overrun, my family slaughtered. Only revenge remained. Deliberating upon this, I startled at the sound of horses approaching. Voices, male and female. I recognized the man, a moneylender from David's town. Why would brigands allow this scoundrel free passage for his midnight trysts? Had he collaborated? My raft was discovered. He comforted the weeping hysterical woman, and my heart grew cold. Was my wife comforted before her execution? Now they would report my raft. Overripe, the money lender's head burst with a single blow, exploding as if pressurized by the guilt within. The woman I strangled. This took considerably longer than I had anticipated. Look! Everybody's scared they'll drop it tonight. At death's approach, all creatures discover an aptitude for violence. The horses watched, understanding only a little. People know something's coming. Ask me, it's doomsday. Thumbs crossed, I closed her windpipe. In the foam about my ankles, two worlds lay ended. Good day, sir. I'd like to purchase a gazette, if I may. Eh? Sure, that's what I'm here for. Seeking vengeance, might I turn this unforeseen circumstance to my advantage? An idea blossomed, plausible, tempting. There now, we've bought one of your papers. Perhaps you'd like to try ours, huh? We believe God will shortly end the world. How does that idea strike you? The notion fascinated me. It was terrible, and yet terribly convenient. And the world? No way, Jose. Oh, I see. Well, we're just leaving. Tied to her saddle, she looked quite natural. Goddamn fanatics! Itching to say, I told you so, wouldn't give them the satisfaction. Two figures had ridden here. Now, two rode back. Soon, soon, I would venture amongst evil men and make them fear me. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Missed you while in prison, boys. Feels good to be back. Need information. Adrian Veidt shot at. Press gave killer's name as Roy Victor Chess. Dead now. Somebody knew Roy Chess. Somebody hired him. Won't insult legendary underworld solidarity by suggesting you surrender name without torture. You keep away from me. You come any closer, you're gonna get this in your goddamn squidgy face. Stupid. All right, everybody stay calm. We'll try to keep this brief. Roy, Chess, how's your game? Listen, please, I just handed over these envelopes to, to the guy. I don't know anything about it. What envelopes? Sealed envelopes. One with cash, one with instructions. I had to find a reliable contract hit. Give him both. Nobody mentioned Vite. Got offered the errand by my boss, freight coordinator at Pyramid Deliveries. Ah, poison capsules in envelopes. M maybe. Hell, I don't know. I took the job. A lot of other guys were getting some action. I figure, why not? Now everybody's getting killed. Killed? All the other freight handlers who were in on things, supposed to be accidents. My boss, guy gave me the envelopes, he fell under a subway train. I'm next, I need protection, I swear. Something bothering you, son. Get off my case. Wearing a knot doesn't mean I'm connected with that stuff last night. I heard the news, blaming that Mason guy's murder on knot tops. I thought, shit, like they needed excuses to hassle us. So you gotta protect me. Yeah. Who did it? Who murdered Hollis? Don't know, kids saw a gang running away. Tell them they're dead. I ought to take off this entire rat whole neighborhood. Oh, goddamn. Goddamn, goddamn, goddamn. Not in front of civilians. We have the knowledge that we wanted. Yeah. Yeah, and then some. Let's get out of here. Hollis. Oh, Christ, man. 
Why? We, we take this and bring Archie down. Unidentified gang murders Mason. Supports mass killer theory. Look, I don't care. Merely suggesting that by finding Mass Killer can have revenge for Mason's death, meant to comfort you. Comfort me? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rorschach. Oh, really? You're welcome. Now know who paid to kill Vite. Information should convince him to help us. Mr. Shea, it's very dark down here. What if someone should discover us? Relax, everybody's up on deck for the evacuation party. Once the last of the equipment's aboard, the ship's ready to put out. How about you? What? Mr. Shea? Really? <laughs> Hira, come on, we're celebrating. Tonight we leave this place after all these months. Hell, I saw Norm Leaf and Lynn Paley up on deck. Even they were smiling. Well, they're being paid enough to vanish and forget their cares. You know, this movie has involved extraordinary secrecy. Yeah, and I know why. That geneticist guy, Furness, told me they'd used a human brain making that goddamn special effect. Hey, feel that? We're moving. That isn't all I can feel. Mm, hero meeting you makes up for everything. Hell, what's digging into my arm? Forget it, whatever it is. I can't wait until a hotel. Max, for God's sake. Max? You're so pale. What's wrong? Nothing, love. Nothing's wrong. Hold me. Vanished without trace. Funny, usually works here until early in morning. The whole building looked deserted as we came in. Maybe he... Wait a minute. What's this? Appointment book? November 1st, 4.30 a.m. Leave for Karnak. Karnak? Question is, what next? No delivery company behind Vite murder bid. Also owners of dimensional developments. Thus, maybe behind Manhattan frame. What's their angle? I'd hoped Adrian might help with that. Um, not sales chart. What is it? Well, with a curve like that, it's either his IQ or his income. Global population, nuclear hazard escalation index, environmental decline, multiple crisis graph, lines converging mid-1990s, optimistic. Crisis arrives decade early unless we get lead on pyramid deliveries. Company traceable, presumably, but obviously not amateurs. Need direct route to people behind pyramid, indication where to start. Also need motive. Why should corporation wish to kill costume heroes? Who has reason for triggering Armageddon? Insanity would seem only motive. Someone wishes to destroy world, removes heroes to prevent their intervention. Need to unearth facts concerning murders. Blake's and Jacoby's. Must admit, despite personal dislike, Byte's absence, unfortunate. Could no doubt have provided some answers. Need answers quickly. World on verge of apocalypse. Death and war already here. Other horsemen can't be far behind. Funny. Ancient pharaohs looked forward to end of world. Must be holding breath with anticipation. Oh, shit. Daniel, found something. Rorschach, I think we're in bad trouble. The person behind this, the person we're up against, I think it's Adrian. All this Egyptian stuff. I thought I'd check out pyramid deliveries on his computer. As password, I tried Ramesses too, the Egyptian name for Ozymandias. He runs it, Rorschach. Runs pyramid deliveries, dimensional developments, the whole show. But Vite was target. I know it's crazy, and I don't want to believe it, but perhaps we should find Adrian fast. Karnak. Ramesses built a gigantic hall there, a monument. Karnak must be Vite's Antarctic retreat. 
Better grab those papers from his desk. It's a long journey, and they'll make better reading than the life jacket instructions. Rorschach's journal, November 1st, 1985. Final entry. Left Veidt's office just before midnight. Dryberg convinced Veidt's behind everything. He's serious about visiting Antarctica. Our ship capable, apparently. But are we? Veidt cannot imagine more dangerous opponent. He could kill us both there in snow. Nobody would ever know. Veidt is faster than Dryberg, perhaps faster than me. Return from mission seems unlikely. This last entry will shortly mail journal to only people can trust. Tell Dryberg I need to check my mail drop. He believes me. If reading this now, whether I am alive or dead, you will know truth, whatever precise nature of this conspiracy. Adrian Veidt responsible. Appreciate your recent support and hope world survives long enough for this to reach you. But writing is on wall. For my own part, regret nothing. Have lived life free from compromise. And step into the shadow now, without complaint. Rorschach, November 1st, 1985. It ain't fair. We didn't ask for no war. There's no goddamn justice in this world. Unrecognizable in corpses' clothing, I was the concealed implement of God's retribution. The ordinary guy got no protection. Abandoning the naked moneylender to the cold surf, I led the horses from the beach. Ahead, Davidstown lay sleeping, little dreaming what approached. I mean, at least those super guys tried to protect folk. I spied the dark, unmoving form of a pirate sentry. Boy, this war business, eh? Uh, just a gazette, please. No offense, man. But I'm in kind of a rush. I rode past. Hi, Joey. How's things? Don't know. Aline's meeting me from work tonight to discuss things. Now she's pissed, because that clashes with Pale Horse's Madison Square gig. I spurred the horses on towards that inevitable confrontation. Hey, lighten up. It ain't the end of the world. Dear God, let me have vengeance, then die swiftly. Delivered at last into the hands of a higher judgment. Mail for you. Uh, thanks. Seymour, bring that in here and open it. I mean, Red Holocaust about to break. Am I supposed to handle things by myself? Uh, this first one, some journal. Dead dog in alley this morning. Tire tread on burst stomach. Jesus, who's it from? Son of Sam? Sling it on the crank file. New Year will burn that garbage heap and start over. War's coming and this paper has a mission. God damn it. The Reds could have emptied their silos five minutes ago. The birds could be in the air right now. How much further? Said we were over Antarctica hours ago. Vite's fortress is nearby, along the coastline. You feel that kicking in the engine? Like it's about to seize? Ice. Shit! I bet it's ice. Coming in too low towards cliffs. You okay? Twisted ankle, nothing serious. How bad is damage to ship? Difficult to say. Probably nothing I couldn't fix given a few hours. It'd be quicker to cover the remaining distance on the hover bikes. You break out the bikes while I get into my snowsuit. Uh, you sure? I can't fit you out in something a little warmer? Fine, like this. Shh. It's all right, girl. Everything's all right.
Observation. Multi-screen viewing engages me like the kinetic equivalent of an abstract or impressionist painting. Words and images evade rational analysis, allowing subliminal hints of the future to leak through. Transient and elusive, these must be grasped quickly. Computer animations imbue even breakfast cereals with an hallucinogenic futurity. Music channels process information blips, avoiding linear presentation, implying limitless personal choice. These reference points established, an emergent worldview becomes gradually discernible amidst the media's white noise. An era of the conceivable made concrete and of the casually miraculous. Observation ends, Vite, New York Time, 11.18 p.m., log and file. It's all right, girl. In these conditions, our visitors won't yet be within 10 miles of Karnak. Ah, you see? Really, getting even this far is a breathtaking effort given their limitations. It must be so disorientating. Their pursuit leads them deeper into moral and intellectual regions as uncharted and devoid of landmark as the territories currently surrounding them. Let's hope they know where to stop. Okay. Looks like there's no option other than a direct approach. We can't creep up without cover, and it's pointless waiting for darkness up here. There isn't any. Untrue. Just isn't any of kind we can use. If Vite truly engineering Third World War, we are approaching Heart of Darkness. Those brochures, all that crap we took from his desk, it didn't read like someone out to carve a headstone for humanity. And anyway, this is Adrian, for God's sake. Why would he want to destroy the world? Insanity, perhaps. Who's qualified to judge something like that? This is the world's smartest man we're talking about here. How can anyone tell if he's gone crazy? Ah, <sighs> oh, well. Come on, old girl. We have a few matters to attend to before they get here. I suppose I've been waiting for an opportune moment, but there's no point putting things off any longer. And no time like the present. Not coming any further, no? Fair enough. You wait here. This won't take a moment. I've finished my work now, and I'd be honored if the three of you would join me for a small drink in the Vivarium before dinner. I have something to celebrate. Vite out. Partying. Holocaust coming. Goddamn knotheads got a party. I can hear that God forbid I call it music clear from Madison Square. Davidstown slept. Deserted save for silence. I entered my former residence noiselessly. Careful not to rouse the butchers occupying it from their debauched slumber. They'll all come out fighting drunk, and it's right down the avenue. I tell you, this is a bad intersection. You never know what's gonna turn up next. Unaware that death was amongst them, they'd know its dark embrace without ever understanding why. One, however, <clears throat> was awake. Oh, hi. Get you something? Nah, guess Josephine posted this like she said. Joseph. Oh, Joey! You must be her... Uh... Girlfriend, ex. We've been fighting. In cataract darkness, I bludgeoned him. Oh, well, I, I ain't seen her lately. No pirates came. But something worse. I looked up into faces familiar, save for their terror. No sweat. I'll wait outside the Promethean. I'm not relishing the encounter. Listen, tell her hustlers, do in tomorrow. The children wailed. I looked down at the figure beneath me. Through puffed and bloodied lips, she mouthed my name. Huh? What'd I say? Don't go away mad. There came an understanding so large, it left no room for sanity. Huh. 
Times like these, people gotta be hostile. Me and Rosa should have quit this town like she wanted and escaped from everything. I ran, but the knowledge of my damnation paced me, gloating, celebrating its awful victory. Mr. White, this is indeed an honor. Might we inquire what it is that provides occasion for such generosity? A life such as mine offers many things worthy of celebration, my friend. You need only look about you. Might I not celebrate the fortunes that have made this Bavarian possible? A miraculous bubble of Tropicana set into endless sub-zero wastes. Two alien universes separated by a membrane of fragile glass. What in my life does not deserve celebrating? But you are right, of course. Today marks an event especially worthy of such attentions. In many ways, it represents the culmination of a dream more than 2,000 years old. Although to uncover the reasons for my current elation, one need not delve quite so deeply into antiquity. A mere 40 years will suffice, back to my childhood. My parents reached America the year I was born, 1939. Entering school, I was already exceptionally bright, my perfect scores on early test papers arousing such suspicion that I carefully achieved only average grades thereafter. What caused such precociousness? My parents were intellectually unremarkable, possessing no obvious genetic advantages. Perhaps I decided to be intelligent, rather than otherwise. Perhaps we all make such decisions, though that seems a callous doctrine. By 17, my parents were both dead, and I faced a different decision. My inheritance offered lifelong idle luxury, and yet, needing nothing, I burned with a paradoxical urge to do everything. Do you understand? My intellect set me apart. Faced with difficult choices, I knew nobody whose advice might prove useful. Nobody living. The only human being with whom I felt any kinship died 300 years before the birth of Christ. Alexander of Macedonia. I idolized him. A young army commander, he'd swept along the coasts of Turkey and Phoenicia, subduing Egypt before turning his armies towards Persia. He died aged 33, ruling most of the civilized world, ruling without barbarism. At Alexandria, he instituted the ancient world's greatest seat of learning. True, people died. Perhaps unnecessarily, though who can judge such things? Yet how nearly he approached his vision of a united world. I was determined to measure my success against his. Firstly, I gave away my inheritance to demonstrate the possibility of achieving anything starting from nothing. Next, I departed for northern Turkey to retrace my hero's steps. I wanted to match his accomplishment, bringing an age of illumination to a benighted world. <laughs> I wanted to have something to say to him should we meet in the Hall of Legends. I followed the path of Alexander's war machine along the Black Sea coast, imagining his armies taking port after port, ancient blood on ancient bronze. Strangely, before subduing Phoenicia, he struck north towards Gordium. Perhaps because of the challenge it presented, the ancient world's greatest puzzle was there, a knot that couldn't be untied. Alexander cut it in two with his sword. Lateral thinking, you see, centuries ahead of his time. Heading south, he entered Egypt through Memphis, where they proclaimed him son of Amun, judge of the dead, whose name means the Hidden One. Under rule from Alexandria, the classic culture of the great pharaohs was restored. I followed him through Babylon, up through Kabul to Samarkand, then down the Indus, where he first met elephants of war where he'd turned back to quell dissent at home. I traveled on, through China and Tibet, gathering martial wisdom as I went. Alexander returned to Babylon to die of an infection, aged 33. Amongst its ruined ziggurats, I saw at last his failings. He'd not united all the world, nor built a unity that would survive him. Disillusioned but determined to complete my odyssey, I followed his corpse to its resting place in Alexandria. The night before returning to America, I wandered into the desert and ate a ball of hashish I'd been given in Tibet. The ensuing vision transformed me. Wading through powdered history, I heard dead kings walking underground, heard fanfares sound through human skulls. Alexander had merely resurrected an age of pharaohs. Their wisdom, truly immortal, now inspired me. 
What intellectual magnificence their system encouraged. Ptolemy, seeking the universe's pivot from his lighthouse, Epheros. Eratosthenes, measuring the world using only shadows. Their greatest secrets, however, were entrusted to their servants, buried alive with them in sand-flooded chambers. Adopting Ramesses II's Greek name and Alexander's freebooting style, I resolved to apply antiquity's teachings to today's world. Thus began my path to conquest. Conquest not of men, but of the evils that beset them. Today, that conquest becomes assured, in which your unquestioning assistance has proven invaluable. Do you comprehend the triumph to which you have contributed? The secret glory that it affords? Do you understand my shame at so inadequate a reward? I... Boy, this is some kind of dump, right? It's where I work, okay? Not in some dinky little magazine office with a bunch of guppies. Hey, hey, fella, excuse me. I'm meeting my brother. He's the manager here. Know where he's at? Milo's in the front office. Gets off around 11.30. Josephine, can we walk for a while? I don't think there's any way we can salvage this relationship. Uh-huh. So that's it. Just like that? I tried my goddamn best, acting like you wanted me to. See, over there? I put your stupid dyke disco poster up. Sure, same place you buy Hustler. I... Listen, I don't have to justify anything to you. I like nice chicks. You give me this political shit. Okay, I'm sorry, I... Look, this book's about relationships. I think if you read it, it'll help you understand what's happened to us. I don't want to understand shit. I just want to go to bed with you one time. I... Joey, please, I can't handle this, and I wa wanna be straight. Oh, Joey, don't. And I wanna be dead. Eventually, I came to an ash-colored shore, a dismal black ocean stretching endless before me. How had I reached this appalling position with love, only love as my guide? Behind me, distantly, a lynch mob howled. Morally, we ought to strike first. Where was my error? The freighter was heading for Davidstown. It should have already arrived. My deduction was flawless, step by step. Pausing, I stood panting, sobbing, listening to the wind-borne sound of my pursuers, closer now as breath returned. Planning to resume my flight, I raised my head, excuse me, and saw her. My husband's a gentleman of color, buys his paper here nights. Has he been by? She seemed to be waiting, not hovering to strike. Forget it, I see my husband now. The unspeakable truth loomed unavoidably before me as I swam towards the anchored freighter, waiting to take extra hands aboard. There'd been no plan to capture David's town. The ship was larger, nearer. I kept swimming. All my well-meaning plans had come to this. I choked, spat out brine, and struck grimly on. They'd come to David's town to wait until they could collect the only prize they'd ever valued, claim the only soul they'd ever truly wanted. My shoulders ached. The ship was massive now. It's some sort of door. I think I can burn out the lock mechanism. Palm trees buried in snow doesn't make sense. There. Open sesame. Nervous. Well, my stomach feels weird and my balls are all shriveled up, so yeah, I guess nervous will do. You know, this must be how ordinary people feel. 
This must be how ordinary people feel around us. Adrian. Now, what can I do for you? Damn it. You know what this is about. Pyramid deliveries are behind this whole mess, and you're behind Pyramid. Christ, Adrian, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to improve the world, like when I started out. My first case made it seem possible to end injustice by demolishing crime syndicates. This notion that criminals monopolized evil was itself demolished by my second case. I investigated the mid-50s disappearance of hooded justice. An operative, government sources revealed, had tried unearthing him back then, reporting failure. Unearthing the operative proved easier. Edward Blake. As intelligent men facing lunatic times, we were very alike, despising each other instantly. Recognizing me, he attacked anyway, mistaking me for a criminal. I studied his limitations, skillful feint, devastating uppercut, little else. He won in the short term. Had Blake found hooded justice, killed him, reporting failure, I can prove nothing. We next met in 1960. I avoided him, more fascinated by John. Still. I observed Blake over the years. Know what? He was in Dallas, minding Nixon the day Kennedy died. Nobody's sure why Nixon was there. Ever read JFK's intended speech? We in this country, in this generation, are by destiny rather than choice, the watchmen on the walls of world freedom. Was he rehearsing it, perhaps, as the motorcade reached the plaza, never suspecting that on the walls of world tyranny, Crosshairs watched him. We all realized then how bad things were. I continued adventuring, but it seemed hollow. I found only the symptoms, leaving the disease itself unchecked. I felt helpless against forces greater than any I'd anticipated. Too cowardly to confront my anxieties, I had life's black comedy explained to me by the comedian himself at the Crime Busters fiasco in 66. He discussed nuclear war's inevitability, described my future role as smartest guy on the cinder, and opened my eyes. Only the best comedians accomplish that. I remember the charred map between my fingers. Nelson saying, someone's got to save the world. That's when I understood. That's when it hit me. Hi. Gloria? I knew you came this way home, so I figured I'd meet you from work. I'm not ready to visit back at the apartment just yet. Just yet? I miss you, Malcolm. I miss the person you were. But I can't live with someone who feels driven to help hopeless cases, then lets their misery affect our lives. If you can promise me you'll ask for a transfer to different work with different patients, I can come home. Malcolm, are you listening to me? Gloria, I'm sorry for those people. They're hurting each other. Malcolm, don't you dare get involved. Gloria, I'm sorry. It's the world. I can't run from it. Its dark and lurching mass filled all my vision. Closer it came. Closer. Brutally, I'd been brought nose to nose with mankind's mortality. For the first time, I genuinely understood that Earth might die. And yet, what could I do? I saw East and West locked into an escalating arm spiral. Here was a knot to try even Alexander's ingenuity. Both sides realized the suicidal implications of nuclear conflict, yet couldn't stop racing towards it lest their opponents should overtake them. Sooner or later, conflict would be inevitable. My plan required preparation. 
Each step had to be taken carefully, constantly striving to keep in mind the enormous scale of what was at stake. The world's present would end, its future, immeasurably vaster, would also vanish. No human vestige would remain. All our richness and color and beauty would be lost, as if it had never been. The world I tried to save was lost beyond recall. I was a horror. Amongst horrors must I dwell. A rope snaked down. Spluttering, I grabbed it. See, people don't reach out and make contact. And from the decks above, a cheer went up, both gross and black. Its stench affronting heaven. The end. You've been coming here weeks, reading that junk over and over, and yet we ain't exactly close. Cause they don't make sense, man. That's why I gotta read them over. That ain't the point. What's your name? My name's Bernie. Bernie? Short for Bernard? Well, I'll be horsewhipped. That's my name. So, don't signify for nothing. Wait a minute. What the hell's going on? Fight, pull over. Steve, you just got suspended. I'm still me, Joe. Pull her over. Oh, shit. That's Joey. That's one of my drivers in a fight. Talk about lousy timing. Each step was synchronized. John, being too powerful and unpredictable to fit my plans, needed removing. Thus, Dimensional Developments hired his past associates and gave them cancer. Yes. Weaver first, Slater, and Moloch later. Unwittingly exposed to radiation, they were closely observed, cultivated as weapons against John. Meanwhile, taking advantage of new technology, I researched genetics. Bubastis was an early success, and teleportation. Since John proved teleportation possible, why develop electric cars? My researches were vital, like my island, secretly purchased in 1970. The only hero retaining public sympathy, I quit two years before the Keen Act, concentrating on my plan. Unable to unite the world by conquest, Alexander's method, I would trick it, frighten it towards salvation with history's greatest practical joke. That's what upset the comedian when awareness of my scheme crashed in upon him. Professional jealousy. Blake's murder, you confess? Confession implies penitence. I merely regret his accidental involvement. Returning from Nicaragua by air, he spotted a ship docking at an uncharted island. Suspecting Sandinista bases, he resolved to investigate. Imagine, the perfect fighting man discovering a plot to put an end to war. An end to fighting. How could genetics and teleportation end war? Well, without John's guiding mind, teleportation proved limited. Anything living died of shock upon transfer, or materialized in an occupied space and exploded. But that wasn't what Blake found on the island. He found a collection of missing artists and scientists working upon a monstrous new life form. Upon learning the creature's intended purpose, Blake's practiced cynicism cracked. Though appalled, exposing my plan would precipitate greater horrors, preventing humanity's salvation. Even Blake balked at that responsibility, telling only Moloch, who he knew wouldn't understand. But I had Moloch's place bugged, and I understood perfectly. The plan Blake had uncovered was this. To frighten governments into cooperation, I would convince them that Earth faced imminent attack by beings from another world. Ah. Uh... <laughs> uh, Adrian, come on, what? You're serious? Perfectly. An intractable problem can only be resolved by stepping beyond conventional solutions. Alexander understood that 2,000 years ago in Gordium. Blake understood too. He knew my plan would succeed, though its scale terrified him. That's why he told nobody it was too big to discuss. But he understood. At the end, he understood. He understood the portents. Knew a dazzling transformation was at hand for mankind. The brutal world he'd relished would simply cease to be. After Blake, I neutralized John. Stolen psychiatric reports indicated his mental withdrawal. The cancer allegations made it physical. By then, Rorschach's masked killer hunt needed stopping. 
My own assassination confirming his erroneous theory placed me beyond suspicion. I'd hired my own killer through a third party. When I fed him the cyanide capsule, perhaps he realized this. Nothing now stood between me and my goal. Humanity's fate rested safely in my hands. Adrian, this is crazy. Who'd believe an alien invasion? Hitler said people swallow lies easily, provided they're big enough. I planned to build my monster, teleport it to a certain destination. Said teleportation unworkable. It works fine, assuming you want things to explode on arrival. Teleported to New York, my creature's death would trigger mechanisms within its massive brain, cloned from a human sensitive. The resultant psychic shock wave, killing half the city. Adrian, I'm sorry. You need help. I know this half New York stuff is bullshit, but I'm still glad we got here before you got deeper into this mess. Christ, you seriously planned all this mad scientist stuff? I mean, when was this hopeless black fantasy supposed to happen? When were you planning to do it? Do it? Dan, do you seriously think I'd explain my master stroke if there remained the slightest chance of you affecting its outcome? I did it 35 minutes ago.
midnight. Midnight November 2nd, that's unusual. I'd expected us to reappear on Earth much earlier. The static interference I noticed earlier makes everything so unpredictable. Obviously, it wasn't caused by a warhead detonation. What then? Not tachyons, surely. Yes, definitely. A squall of tachyons. Where can they be coming from? I'd almost forgotten the excitement of not knowing, the delights of uncertainty. Tendori to go. That's all they went out for, these people. Tendori to go. And instead, they, they got, I mean, who, who's safe? How can anyone protect themselves against a world where this happens? Tachyon particles traveling backwards in time occur rarely. Someone must be generating them. If I probe far enough, I should stumble upon the source of the disturbance. Though this static makes scanning difficult. Also, there's apparently more than one generator. Most are faint, but a pulse from the southern polar region is strong. Logically, we should investigate the Antarctic signal immediately, assess its connection with this catastrophe. Get me out of here. Out? Certainly. We can trace the tachyons to their source, and John, I just want to be away from these people and that thing, and... <laughs> I'm sorry. How thoughtless of me. This must be a distressing time for you. John, for Christ's sake, just take it away. Take Cat away, Vite. Take Cat away and face me. Adrian, I'm sorry. I don't buy this hoax invasion story. Come on. What are you really up to? Very well. Once more. I engineered a monster, cloned its brain from a human psychic, sent it to New York, and killed half of the city. Adrian, that's bullshit. Listen to voice. He did it. Look, nobody could do that. You're being... He did it. Half New York. Fight. Get rid of Cat. No, I don't think so. After all, her presence saves you the humiliation of another beating. Rorschach, his story, it's full of holes. Adrian, your assassination attempt. What if he'd shot you first instead of your secretary? I suppose I'd have had to catch the bullet, wouldn't I? You... Come on. That's completely... You couldn't really do that. You wouldn't kill half New York. You couldn't. I could. I did. If you like, I'll tell you how. The psychic was the key. Poor young Robert DeShanes. I acquired his brain after death, and my geneticists cloned something much bigger and more powerful from it, incorporating it into my creature. The brain was a psychic resonator. It would amplify a signal pulse and broadcast it, the signal triggered by the onset of death. We coded a lot of information into the signal, terrible information. Max Shea's descriptions of an alien world, Hira Manish's images, and Lynette Paley's sounds. Other than those killed outright by the shock, many will be driven mad by the sudden flood of grotesque sensation, and sensitives worldwide will have bad dreams for years to come. No one will doubt this Earth has met a force so dreadful it must be repelled, all former enmities aside. No one will know. Those involved are all dead killed by killers who killed each other. A lethal pyramid. What about us? Yes. I've been rather wondering about that myself. Bubastus, what is it, girl? I see. Right. Of course. Who else has the intelligence or resources for tachyon interference? It displays remarkable foresight, don't you think? <laughs> Since tachyons only affect me, he's obviously anticipated my possible discovery of his plot for some time. What? Are you saying that Adrian planned all that? That stuff in New York? Yes. Yes. He killed Blake and half New York. Excuse me, Rorschach. I'm informing Lori 90 seconds ago. Rorschach? John, don't. 
Don't start all your crap now. Did the fight kill all those people? I... I'm sorry. It's these tachyons there, muddling things up. I'd better follow him inside. No! Don't you dare leave me out here! Oh, dear. Pubastus, quickly. Must stop him. Killed Blake. Killed half New York. Yes. Yes. He killed Blake and half New York. Excuse me, Rorschach. I'm informing Laurie 90 seconds ago. What? Where's Laurie? John, uh, are you okay? Y you seem sort of drugged. I... I'm sorry. It's these tachyons there. Muddling things up. I'd better follow him inside. Bite. Even if I can't predict where I'm going to find you, I can turn this place to glass. You can't hide. The Tachyons were clever, but this is stupid. It isn't like you to... Ah, very well. If I must follow this through to the bitter end... Rubastus. Forgive me. Light, don't. Hmm. Do you know, I really wasn't sure that would work. Fight! You're an asshole. else I wasn't sure would work. Oh. Fight, you bastard. If you've hurt her, I'll... Oh, Daniel. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Please, do grow up. My new world demands less obvious heroism, making your schoolboy heroics redundant. What have they achieved? Failing to prevent Earth's salvation is your only triumph. By default, you usher in an age of illumination so dazzling that humanity will reject the darkness in its heart and turn instead towards the... Uh... I am disappointed, Vite. Very disappointed. Restructuring myself after the subtraction of my intrinsic field was the first trick I learned. It didn't kill Osterman. Did you think it would kill me? What's that in your hand, Vite? Another ultimate weapon? Yes. Yes, you could say that. From New York. Pictures coming up. Is that Seen here? No Utterly yeah, horrible. No I can't describe. I can Death toll in the millions. In New York, a pregnant woman. Suspension of hostilities until Russia's policy withdrawal from Afghanistan as soon as
did it! I saved Earth from hell. Next, I'll help her towards Utopia. It is as Ramesses said. Canaan is devastated. Ashkelon is fallen. Gezer is ruined. Yenoam is reduced to nothing. Israel is desolate, and her seed is no more. And Palestine has become a widow for Egypt. Wait a minute. Next. After what you did? You can't get away with that. All the countries are unified and pacified. Can't get away with it. Will you expose me, undoing the peace millions died for? Kill me, risking subsequent investigation? Morally, you're in checkmate. Like Blake, let's compromise. What? Logically, I'm afraid he's right. Exposing this plot, we destroy any chance of peace, dooming Earth to worse destruction. On Mars, you demonstrated life's value. If we would preserve life here, we must remain silent. Never tell anyone? We really have to buy this? Jesus, he was right. All we did was fail to stop him saving Earth. Jesus, how, how can humans make decisions like this? We're damned if we stay quiet. Earth's damned if we don't. We, okay, okay, count me in. We say nothing. Joking, of course. Rorschach? Rorschach, wait, where are you going? This is too big to be hard-assed about. We have to compromise. No. Not even in the face of Armageddon. Never compromise. Hmm. Now, what would you call that, I wonder? Blotting out reality, perhaps? Oh, well. In all likelihood, it's of no consequence. As a reliable witness, Rorschach is hardly, how shall we put it, without stain. Still, I think I shall meditate now in my orrery. Obviously, you must both make yourselves at home. Both? I just want to go somewhere else. Can you get us out of here, John? John? Where'd he go? Where'd everybody go? I mean, in New York. All those bodies, how can everybody just walk away from that? Let's find someplace quiet, away from these lights. We need to think, to talk. But where's John? He's been acting so strange. He predicted I'd tell him about you and me, then seemed angry when I did. Ah, uh, how angry? Oh, I don't know. He confuses me, and I don't need confusing. I'm screwed up already. I'd learn stuff on Mars, and then New York. Dead. Everybody was just... dead. I keep wanting to cry, but my throat, it's not big enough. I... Dan, can we sit down? Lori, listen, about us. Do you think John minds? It doesn't matter. After New York, nothing matters. That's what I'm trying to say. Dan, please. Sit with me. I need you. Dan, all those people, they're dead. They can't disagree or eat Indian food or love each other. It's sweet. Being alive is so damn sweet. Lori, wh what do you want me to do? I want you to love me. I want you to love me because we are not dead. Here. Take these off. I want to see you. I want to see you and taste you and smell you. Just because I can. What is that, Dan? What's that you smell of? Nostalgia. Shack, you know I can't let you do that. Uh, of course, 
must protect Vite's new utopia. One more body amongst foundations makes little difference. Well, what are you waiting for? Do it, Rorschach. Do it! Describe the scene as to like Hiroshima, but building that an almost we asked, war has been a burden. Further attacks be imminent, and, and literally Russia millions of we Apparently, the creature died on accidentally not very intelligent, but it is passively upon death. Hello, John. I was hoping we'd have the chance to talk. John, I know people think me callous, but I've made myself feel every death. By day, I imagine endless faces. By night, well, I dream about swimming towards a hideous... No, never mind, it isn't significant. What's significant is that I know I know I've struggled across the backs of murdered innocents to save humanity, but someone had to take the weight of that awful necessary crime. I'd hoped you'd understand. Unlike Rorschach. You needn't consider Rorschach, but yes, I understand. Without condoning or condemning. Human affairs cannot be my concern. I'm leaving this galaxy for one less complicated. But you'd regained interest in human life, yes. I have. I think perhaps I'll create some. Goodbye, Adrian. John, wait. I did the right thing, didn't I? It all worked out in the end. In the end? Nothing ends, Adrian. Nothing ever ends. John? Wait! What do you mean by... Right, I'm coming. And now, more Christmas excitement with tonight's return visit. Your friends, Mr. and Mrs. Hollis, are here to see you. What? But I don't know any... To the outer limits. Ah, I don't know anyone I'd rather see. Come inside. How wonderful, my dear friends, Mr. and Mrs. Hollis. Oh, <laughs> of course. Mother, we... What the hell are you trying to do? I thought you were dead. Who did that to your hair? You should sue. You look like a waitress. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Mother, shut up. We can't stay long, but we had to let you know we're okay. We brought flowers. Merry Christmas, Mom. Oh, Lori. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> so who's the stud? He was Dan Dryberg. We're Sam and Sandra Hollis now. Delighted to meet you, Dan. Equally delighted, Miss Jupiter. I'm a fan from way back. Ooh, I like this one. Now, let me see. I must have some gifts for you. Mom, we don't have long, and there's important things to discuss. At Christmas, what's more important than gifts? When you were a little girl, always, you used to... Mom, I found out who my real dad was. You? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Laurel, I'm so sorry. What, what must you think? It, it was just an afternoon in summer. He stopped by. Mom, I tried to be angry, but I mean, 
I never wanted you to know. I should have told you, but I don't know. I just felt ashamed. I felt stupid. And mom, it doesn't matter. People's lives take them strange places. They do strange things. And well, sometimes they can't talk about them. I know how that is. I love you, mom. You never did anything wrong by me. That's all I came to tell you, I guess. We have to go, but we'll visit soon. Sure. Listen, take this. It'll help you hold on to Blondie. Guess I'd better find him something, too. Well, yeah, but hurry. I get nervous waiting around. What's that, your... Oh, that old thing. Hope it hasn't embarrassed you. Oh, no, not at all. To tell the truth, I... Well, in 1952, I owned a copy. You did? Why, bless you. You keep it. Just don't tell the wife. Dan, uh, Sam, honey, come on. And don't wait too long to have children. I'm an old woman. Goodbye, Mom. You know, maybe that wasn't such a bad idea of your mother's. Children, forget it. Not yet. You were talking about adventuring, and I'm not staying home changing diapers. Night Owl and Silk Spectre. Sounds neat. Silk Spectre's too girly, you know? Plus, I want a better costume that protects me. Maybe something leather with a mask over my face. Also, maybe I ought to carry a gun. So you finally came back. What? Did you go to Dimension X form? Hmm? Seymour Christ, I don't know. Three million New Yorkers died and you weren't one of them. Seymour, don't you have anything to do? Well, I was gonna eat. Oh, no. You got two more pages to fill before you eat. Thanks to this goddamned ass kissing accord. Nobody's allowed to say bad things about our good old buddies the Russians anymore. So bang, goes a two-page column. Get some filler from somewhere. Um, well, I guess something from the crank file. Yes, yes, whatever's within your limited abilities. Just please, let me eat my lunch in peace. Go on, just run whichever you want. I leave it entirely in your hands. <laughs> 